There are plenty of highlights from season 92-93, and with the... The first group one of the season is run at Mooney Valley in August, and it was won by one of last season's best two-year-olds. Crazy, but King Marauding got the front at the 600 metre mark. Street Ruffian second from Alishan going four, then High Chicago, Yachty and Grey Man. Then Durbridge followed by Dark Bow, Black Rouge and Starring and Plum Crazy. But the three year old King Marauding at the 450 metre mark. Straight away two and a half in front before the turn now. Second placing at the moment is Alishan. Durbridge from a long way back from Yachty. Then High Chicago, Black Rouge and on the inside Street Ruffian. But King Marauding at the 200 metre mark. Oh, he's put four or five on them now. Durbridge running home late from Yachty and then further back starring, but the brilliant King Marauding all the way here. King Marauding wins the Manicato brilliantly by three lengths. Durbridge second, Yachty third. But Street Ruffian, but King Marauding at the 200 metre mark. Oh, he's put four or five on them now. Durbridge running home late from Yachty and then further back starring, but the brilliant King Marauding all the way here. King Marauding wins the Manicato brilliantly by three lengths. Durbridge second, Yachty third, then starring. Written by Philip Alden. King rewarding success in the... Go to the track yesterday and see this uh, great horse win against another great horse, two chestnuts. At the 1,000 metres mark, Domstar led about a... They're going to sprint the last 500 only. Domstar by about a head to Shaftesbury Avenue, taking closer order. Superimpose is cluttered up between horses coming around the turn. Mobile Peter on his outside, followed by Quick Score. Super's into the clear now. Straightening up and Shaftesbury Avenue has pinched a break on them. On the outside, Superimpose and Quick Score putting in a dash, followed by Domstar and Chardé. Dittman getting to work on Shaftesbury Avenue. Quick Score and Superimpose on the outside. Can't reach him. Shaftesbury Avenue holding them safely, and Shaftesbury Avenue wins the Warwick Stakes by a length or a little more than a length to superimpose. Quick score and Shaftesbury Avenue has pinched a break on them. On the outside, superimpose and quick score, putting in a dash, followed by Dom Star and Chardé. Dittman getting to work on Shaftesbury Avenue. Quick score and superimpose on the outside. Can't reach him. Shaftesbury Avenue holding them safely, and Shaftesbury Avenue wins the Warwick Stakes by a length or a little more than a length to superimpose. Quick score third, followed by Chardé. Uh, he is a great horse. He's got a tremendous first up record. His next run, we believe, Max will be, is it the Cradley Stakes in Melbourne on September 12th? Is that H what you His heard yesterday? Warwick Farm was champagne racing. Shaftesbury Avenue showed, I think, what, which uh, a point that we've suspected for a long time. He's the best racehorse in Australia. Uh, but if he's got about a half length, the wait for age conditions of the Warwick Stakes yesterday suited Shaftesbury Avenue, made to order for Shaftesbury Avenue, were right against superimposed, but to the end he was trying. I would like to see a return bout in the Epsom under handicap conditions, and I don't know whether the result would be the same. See, I'm a big fan of Shaftesbury Avenue, Max, but obviously you haven't been at Flemington for the last couple of Australian Cups. Let's elope and better loosen up. I'd like to see Let's Elope and Shaftesbury Avenue flatten out with about a furlong to run at Flemington over a mile, a mile and a quarter. OK, so <laughs> would I. It's a trick to that. Yes. The big story was the Mimsy Stakes yesterday. Let's go to Caulfield. And Grooming on the inside was the first to destroy and missing the start by 10 lengths of Stace with about 850 to go and Durbridge the leader. A half length to Naturalism, a length and a half Ivory Way on the inside of Aiton Gambler last of all at the 600. Durbridge being joined by Naturalism and wider on the track is Isla. Ivory Way is just in behind them followed by Crack and Back and Mr Euro Star a length and a half for Kushla Maria. Taken around the outside star of the realm being followed by Grooming starring second last and Graydon Gambler last of all as they straighten up. Durbridge on the inside being headed by Naturalism and together coming down towards the 250 on the outside naturalism has hit the front from Durbridge Ivory Way and further back then is Island down the outside of Star of the Realm but naturalism with a big break with a hundred meters left to go Star of the Realm is starting to fly home when the race is all over but naturalism was much too good and wins it brilliantly naturalism won the Sky Channel Memsey by three lengths to Star of the Realm Durbridge is third front from Durbridge Ivory Way and further back then is Island down the outside of Star of the Realm but Naturalism with a big break with a hundred meters left to go Star of the Realm is starting to fly home when the race is all over but Naturalism is much too good and wins it brilliantly Naturalism won the Sky Channel Memsey by three lengths to Star of the Realm Durbridge is third yes as Keith mentioned a derby winner beating another derby winner and another derby winner was third Durbridge winning the AJC they've seen a lot of Naturalism in fact until yesterday you'd seen the best of Naturalism Yes, so I do think naturalism, though, uh, Bruce, has been an unlucky in Melbourne. And I wouldn't say that naturalism is going to always have that much, um, uh, shall we say, space to spare over Star of the Realm. I don't think there's a great deal. Let's go to the Craigley and we'll see what uh, Max and Keith think after this. Racing now. 
And the Captain Crook on the inside was the first to jump out from Nick the centre. My Eagle Eye, a long way back, a star of the realm, followed by Sub Zero and Grooming and Ivory Way as well back as they make the home turn. Jim's mate is the leader as they straighten up with 450 left to go, tackled by Ramyar. We told her running on pretty well down the outside and Durbridge behind them, Heroicity. Captain Cook is a fair way back in the field and Star of the Realm is starting to wind up from a fair way back, followed by Sub Zero and Bell Devo. 250 metres left to go. Jim's mate on the inside being tackled by Ramyar. We told her getting into the clear is running on pretty well, followed by Burbridge, and here comes Star of the Grell, and, and look at Grooming, Grooming right down the outside, Ramya hit the front, tackled by Star of the Realm, Star of the Realm takes the lead close to home, flying home is Sub-Zero, Star of the Realm too good, Star of the Realm has won it from Sub-Zero, third home probably starting to wind up from a fair way back, followed by Sub-Zero and Bell Devo, 250 metres left to go, Jim's mate on the inside being tackled by Ramya, Wheatale to getting into the clear is running on pretty well, followed by Burbridge, and here comes Star of the Grell, and, and look at Grooming, Grooming right down the outside, Ramya hit the front, tackled by Star of the Realm, Star of the Realm takes the lead close to home, flying home is Sub-Zero, Star of the Realm too good, Star of the Realm has won it from Sub-Zero, third home probably Grooming, just ahead of Jim's mate Ramya, we told her. Well, 12 months of the day, Star of the Realm was balloted out of the Ascot Vale Stakes, couldn't get a run, he went on and won the derby, now he's won his first race at Wade for Age, I thought he looked terrific in the run, he, because he struggled early, and the fact, struggled early in the fact that he was able to get home. Did we see perhaps the Melbourne Cup winner there yesterday at Flemington in the Craig Lee Stakes? Well, uh, I think we may have, Bruce, and it may be any of the three place getters. I was very impressed with Star of the Realm. As you know, I'm a real Star of the Realm fan. But I watched him close. I do think Sub-Zero would have had more scope for improvement and certainly... Gr the Realm are equal favourites for the Caulfield Cup, though Keith Hillier believes Star of the Realm could be a big risk at Caulfield. Now, Cross is favourite, though grooming's been the big shortener here with Sub-Zero and My Eagle Eye has held his place in Star of the... Look at the race and then... We'll One of the stars from last season was the Sydney Philly Burst the first of her sex to win the two-year-old Triple Crown. Trained by Clary Connors, Burst found winning form early in the season. Into the straight skating, just led Burst on the outside. Mahaya three deep, is balanced up by Quinton as they turn for home. She lost a little bit of ground on the corner, however. Burst and skating fighting it out at the 200 mark, and they've come right away from Mahaya, followed by Diamond Capri. Skating on the inside, Burst on the outer. They're four in front of Mahaya. Burst and skating having a titanic tussle in the T-Row stakes. Burst has the head in front, and Burst fell in to beat skating about a long head. Five By the third week in September, Melbourne Cup contenders around Australia and in New Zealand are well and truly on the road that leads to Flemington. In the Underwood Stakes, there were a few good... ...go straight into the uh, replay of the head-on because there was a protest. Here's Muirfield Village with superimposed and watch better loosen up. He's a pretty good run, third. 500 out, Lord Revener is joined by play or pay. Muirfield Village on the outside is under heavy pressure, turning the corner, followed by Sade and superimpose is now pulled out into the clear by Chris Munce and the big horse is starting to wind up in the straight 300 out, play or pay, tackled by Muirfield Village who hits the front coming to the 200, but here comes Super. Superimpose down the outside is coming after the three-year-old Muirfield Village is tackled by the big red horse. Superimpose on the outside, grabs the lead from Muirfield Village, go super, oh it's tight, Muirfield Village has kicked again, Muirfield Village kicked again, he might have worried super out of it, there's very little in it. But out play or pay, tackled by Muirfield Village who hits the front coming to the 200, but here comes super, super imposed down the outsiders coming after the three year old, Muirfield Village is tackled by the big red horse, super imposed on the outside, grabs the lead from Muirfield Village, go super, oh it's tight, Muirfield Village has kicked again, Muirfield Village kicked again, he might have worried super out of it there's very little in it but you will see superimposed coming in note the whip arm there of months had to stop riding right on the post at well just before the post and that's what cost him the race but nevertheless put it this way Muirfield Village did put him under considerable pressure and uh, it was a great race the three-year-old proved too good on the day well Keith the extraordinary thing that happened yes well Keith the extraordinary thing that happened yesterday in Sydney was that a horse who had his first start on July the 29th could beat two horses who between them have won nine million dollars in prize money. They're the greatest prize money winners in the history of racing here. Max Presnell was there. Mu from the winner because uh, he, he too is courageous. Muirfield Village is uh, going on to the spring champion stakes. He'll have plenty of opposition there, namely from a horse called Coronation Day. He is then going down to Mel Easy win yesterday. And admittedly, the class wasn't all that strong behind him, but uh, he won like a very good horse.
Ramiara half length, Naturalism on the outside, close handy, just behind them, My Brilliant Star. Ramiara by a neck on Naturalism, looks to be going pretty well, the favourite over on the inside is My Brilliant Star running on, back behind them, Bell Devo, followed by Mr Eurostar, Eclusha Maria, Veldano second last, Alpha Bell last as they round the home turn, Naturalism racing up on the outside, looks to be going very well, Naturalism almost level with Ramiara as they make the turn, they've got away by two lengths to My Brilliant Star, followed by Bell Devo and hard ridden next is Mr Eurostar, but Naturalism has cruised away at the top of the straight. It's well cleared by three lengths to Ramia, running on my brilliant star, and then Bell Diva, but it's all over. This will bolt in a very good horse, Naturalism. And coming down to the line to win untroubled, Naturalism's won it, getting up for second. Oh, very tight. Give it to my brilliant star. But Naturalism has cruised away at the top of the straight. It's well cleared by three lengths to Ramia, running on my brilliant star, and then Bell Diva, but it's all over. This will bolt in a very good horse, Naturalism. And coming down to the line to win untroubled, Naturalism's won it, getting up for second. And, uh, oh, very tight. Give it to my brilliant star and nose to Ram. Well, he was compared with superimposed yesterday. In fact, Lee Friedman's already saying he's superior at weight for age and he's close to being the best horse he's ever trained. Last season, there just seemed to be a small... Keith, you were at Mooney Valley yesterday. You saw a horse who was very impressive naturalism and arguably favourite for the Cox Plate at this early stage. He probably is not because I don't think he'll run, but he may run in the Melbourne Cup, but only if he, he misses an invite uh, for the... Japan Cup. His favourite now for the Melbourne Cup after yesterday. Yeah, he's probably the new favourite in front of Viander Cross, but as Keith said, just hold your pennies at the moment. It's a bit early. Star of the Realm, Tennessee Jack, who are coming back. And let's now go to the uh, Vic Health Cup. Uh, this was an extraordinary performance. She was on her nose at the 1200 mannerism, had top weight. Well weighted, by the way, only giving alias Commerbanch three kilos, but this is one of the runs of the spring. And King Marauding's third last over on the inside of Majestic Boy. And Mannerism, the favourite last of all, as they race onto the railway side with 850 to pass the 600. Then Royal Stack, Holiday Lover, well back Majestic Boy, King Marauding. And Mannerism still last of all as they round the home turn. 450 metres left to go. Andy's reward being tackled by Infallible the centre. Looming up on the outside is Alias Combabash as they straighten up, followed by Tar Heel Boy and Black Rouge. Rare chance behind them, Excited Angel. Star Video down the outside. Mannerism well back with Soho Square. Alias Combash the leader coming down past the 200 tackle by Black Rouge on the outside and Vows is running on well and Mannerism right down the outside is coming from last Black Rouge is the leader 100 to go Mannerism flying on the outside Black Rouge just in front Mannerism on the outside grabbing it Mannerism Mannerism a huge run has run it from Vows and Black Rouge third up fancy lover and Mannerism and King Marauding are at the tail of the field turning for home Infallible hit the front at the bend coming after it now Alias Combabash and Alias Combabash first for home from Infallible then Black Rouge for Followed by Rare Chance. Further back is Vows at the 200 metre mark. Alias Combabash grabbed now by Black Rouge. Black Rouge hit the front to Alias Combabash. Vows. Mannerism is flashing home. Black Rouge clear though. Mannerism runs to second. Black Rouge in front. Mannerism coming hard. Got there. Mannerism, what a run. Beat Black Rouge and Vows. Majestic boy close. Up in Sydney. See what it's done to the Caulfield Cup. That was the show day cup of the Vic Health Cup. Mannerism's performance. A, a comment on it. it was quite extraordinary, wasn't it? Glad we cut there because Mannerism was last in that picture, Bruce, and uh, she got up to win after being knocked down. It was one of the most amazing performances you would see uh, at a racetrack. She's into 10 to 1 for the Caulfield Cup, and I left the track on Thursday thinking I'd seen the Caulfield Cup winner in her. I don't think she can be beaten if she can stay a mile and a half. Yeah, it's not the first time you've left tracks thinking that something that won that day would win one of the cups, though, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> uh, you're going to disagree? Well, look and see what it's done to the Caulfield Cup market. Mannerism into 10 to 1 now from about uh, 16's, 20's. Viander Cross favourites. Uh, Viander Cross Grooming, who ran on Thursday Sub-Zero with Naturalism 8 to 1. That of the spring, the $250,000 Group 1 George Maynard. Tremendous finish coming up. By three quarters to Kinjate, a length to Dr Grace on the inside of Telesto, a length to Rough Habit, followed by Coronation Day, who's cramped for room as they near the turn, and then Power Chief and better loosen up, and back at the tail is Kabora, and still at seven lengths from first to last as they swing the corner. It's Durbridge in front, about a neck on Kinjate, Telesto three deep on the turn, followed by Dr Grace, Coronation Day near the fence, and Rough Habit about to be switched out as they come over the rise. Kinjate headed Durbridge coming to the 200. Telesto is battling on. Then Dr. Grace, Coronation Day winding up and further out. Rough Habit Coronation Day is coming after Kinjate with Rough Habit on the outside. Coronation Day coming at Kinjate. Larry Cassidy hard at work. Coronation Day poked his head in front as they hit the line and Coronation Day won the George Main. Ahead to Kinjate with Rough Habit third. 
Open day near the fence and rough habit about to be switched out as they come over the rise. Kinjate headed Durbridge coming to the 200. Telesto is battling on. Then Dr. Grace Coronation Day winding up and further out. Rough habit. Coronation Day is coming after Kinjate with rough habit on the outside. Coronation Day coming at Kinjate. Larry Cassidy hard at work. Coronation Day poked his head in front as they hit the line and Coronation Day won the George Main. Ahead to Kinjate with rough habit third. In third. In fourth. Coronation Day's trainer Max Lees declared the Colt to be the best he's trained since Luskin Star, following the three-year-old's win. George Main, Coronation Day winning. Now, for the second consecutive week, we've seen a three-year-old upstage the older horses. Does this mean that the uh, the weight for age scale is incorrect? The three-year-olds are very good, or the older horses are overrated? It's an easy one to start with, Max. Good luck. Yes, well, I'm, I'm a supporter of the weight for age scale. Uh, I don't think the three-year-olds are getting uh, too, much, uh, too much weight from the older horses. Uh, I do think an outstanding three-year-old will beat uh, a top-class uh, older horse. That's the point. They've got to be outstanding. You get a second-rate... Uh, I do think that Coronation Day is going to prove something special. To horses. In the spring champion stakes, Coronation Day clashed with the Cummings train Muirfield Village, who was coming off a win in the Group 2 Hill Stakes. Great loser. Now Dittman's in a spot of bother here on Muirfield Village. He's got plenty of horse underneath him, but absolutely nowhere to go as they come around the corner. Pallet has pushed pretty deep on the turn, straightening up, and Takeshi put the head in front of Air Seattle. He's classic as looming up on the outside. Salkin Tay under pressure. Coronation Day had to push Salkin Tay out of the way. He's into the clear, and here he comes. Coronation Day hit the front. Coronation Day dashed to the lead past the 200. Muirfield Village, after being held up for a run, is into the clear, but the bird has flown. Coronation Day is well clear Cassidy keeping him going in this magnificent cult. Coronation Day one easing up over Muirfield Village who should have been play. Seattle. He's classic as looming up on the outside. Salkin Tay under pressure. Coronation Day had to push Salkin Tay out of the way. He's into the clear and here he comes. Coronation Day hit the front. Coronation Day dashed to the lead past the 200. Muirfield Village after being held up for a run is into the clear but the bird has flown. Coronation Day is well clear Cassidy keeping him going in this magnificent cult. Coronation Day one easing up over Muirfield Village who should have been closer. Coronation Day's second Group 1 win was certainly impressive. Both three-year-olds continued their spring campaigns in Melbourne. Right in Melbourne. In the Turnbull Stakes at Flemington, naturalism continued on his winning way. On the bend, 600 left to go. Ramya the inside and Hirawisity will turn in front of My Eagle Eye. In fourth placing is Naturalism and the all-white poised to have a crack at the leaders. Followed by My Brilliant Star, London Bridge and then Valdano and Star of the Realm getting into the clear down the outside. 3.50 to go. Hirawisity went to the lead. Marshall asks for Naturalism now and he winds up and at the 300 hit the front. It's Naturalism drawing away from Hirawisity. Then My Eagle Eye, London Bridge and Star of the Realm is down the outside but it's all Naturalism. He sprints away, he's put four lengths on them. London Bridge runs to second, but Naturalism, he scores in a breeze. Naturalism by three lengths to London Bridge, a photo third. Hirawisity went to the lead. Marshall asks for Naturalism now, and he winds up, and at the 300, hit the front. It's Naturalism drawing away from Hirawisity. Then My Eagle Eye, London Bridge, and Star of the Realm is down the outside, but it's all Naturalism. He sprints away, he's put four lengths on them. London Bridge runs to second, but Naturalism, he scores in a breeze. Naturalism by three lengths to London Bridge, Photo third. Here it While naturally by London Bridge, star of the realm a long way back, but it's all naturalism in the final stages. He's going to bolt in naturalism, and naturalism raced home to a great win. Naturalism has won by three lengths. London Bridge second, getting up for third. Maybe Mr. Eurostar just ahead of Heroicity and Bell Darnow, and further back to My Eagle Eye, followed by Star of the Realm, notwithstanding and Groom. Third. Here it While naturalism was winning at Flemington, his adversary from last autumn, Viander Cross showed that his spring campaign was progressing in the right direction with a stylish win at Hastings. 600 to go. Gate Trees the leader now by two lengths from Lord Majestic. Dancing Lord being urged along. Cavalier is next. The end across and surfers. Paradise Conan's in a bit of a spot. Followed by Castle Town and Wire or Times. They head for home now. And Lord Majestic's the leader from Gaytrees. Here come the challenges from the end across and surfers. Paradise and Conan has got a split through for Greg Caird on the inside. Might have got to the front. Here comes the end across with a big run. Conan, the end across. Lord Majestic, Castle Town and Cavalier surfers. Paradise. This is a has disappeared. Beander Cross and Conan there, the two. Beander Cross pulling out a bit more, and he got there. Beander Cross beat Conan and Castle Town. Lord Majestic followed home then by Cavalier. First assistant reign continued throughout Guinea's day. The wait for age Caulfield stakes attracted several cup contenders, and the winner's effort had to be seen to be believed. 
And last of all in five lengths back is Castletown. Gathano took the lead from Dr. Grace, but Mannerism looked to be travelling very well on the outside. Then Ramya, followed by Sub-Zero and Heroicity on the rail. Gathano at the 400 turned in front of Mannerism, led by about a length around the turn, and then Ramya in the centre. Dr. Grace is next, dropping out of it, followed by Heroicity. Gathano on the inside, Mannerism swung wide, Ramya between them. Down to the 200, Heroicity's running on OK. Mannerism took the lead at the 200 metre mark from Ramya, fighting back. Mannerism racing about a bit. Ramya's got a head in front and Heroicity in the centre. It's Mannerism and look at Castletown. He's swapping them. Castletown from last. Mannerism, Heroicity, but Castletown, what a run. Castletown has got up to win it on the outside from Heroicity, Ramya. Manor Play straight up and gather now as the leader. Mannerism down the outside. Ramya's running a bit of a race and further back is Heroicity followed by Dr. Grace at the 200. Gather now tackled by Ramya and deeper on the track is Mannerism who's starting to paddle a bit and here comes Heroicity. Heroicity finishing on strongly as they come to the 100. Ramya and Castletown storming home down the outside. Ramya, Castletown grabbing them. Castletown! Castletown's come from last to win the Caulfield Stakes. From Heroicity, third home, Ramya. Well, Castletown was so far back at the halfway mark that his rider, Noel Harris, considered pulling him up. Now, I suppose, Max, he's in, uh, in the Cups with a, a winning chance. Well, he's got to have a winning chance, Keith, because uh, the conditions next Saturday could well be a, a duplicate of, of what uh, Castletown went through yesterday. Uh, I thought what uh, Castletown went through yesterday. Uh, I thought Mannerism was a shade disappointing. I realise that she, she isn't seasoned enough. Uh, if she's not seasoned enough yesterday for 2,000 metres, Caulfield Cup 2,400 metres, will she be seasoned enough for that? I'd have grave doubts. Yes. Castletown's win in the Caulfield States was his fifth at Group 1 level. As the condition of the track deteriorated, punters were finding it difficult to line up the form. One horse who relished the heavy going was ready to explode, who turned the Turak handicap into a one-act affair. They've gone past the 600, Jim's mate joined on the inside by ready to explode and they're five lengths in front now from starring running on with just Tommy, Soho Square hard ridden, next Mams El Padu, Prince Salieri and then came Excited Angel followed by Infallible and then Citizen on the turn and ready to explode straightened up by three lengths into the straight from Jim's mate beaten, Prince Salieri running on along the fence and then starring Mams El Padu, just Tommy squeezed for room and Excited Angel out wide but ready to explode has a huge lead He's five lengths in front of Prince Salieri and Excited Angel. Ready to explode. He's found form today. He's well clear and he's going to bolt in. Ready to explode. He's won it by about five lengths on the post. Excited Angel. Third, Prince Salieri. Then in At the head of the others by Infallible, but ready to explode. Six lengths ahead of Prince Salieri with 100 to go. Excited Angel running on. Dark Zar from a long way back, but ready to explode. Will bolt in. Ready to explode. Won the Turak by five lengths. Excited Angel. Prince Salieri third. Well, ready to explode, third in the derby last year, but he hadn't fired a shot since. The race is often a good guide to the Caulfield Cup. Was yesterday's event uh, a guide, Max? I wouldn't think so, Keith, but there again, were any of the races yesterday a guide? All we can say is that similar conditions, you're looking for the old war horses. I thought Prince Salieri, the, the latest markets for firstly the Caulfield Cup, Vianda Cross the favourite. Castletown, yesterday's winner, finished nearly three lengths behind Beander Cross at their last meeting, but Castletown now on the second line of betting. Oh, this uh, is first uh, of all, let's have a look at the Melbourne Cup, Max. I know you want to add to his collection. Right. Castletown and Beander Cross at fives. And Sub-Zero, he'll be better suited under handicap conditions. He's on the second. Galloper superimposed, tuned up for another crack at the Melbourne Cup with an effortless win in today's Canberra Cup. The mighty eight-year-old gave Mick Dipman an armchair ride and he'll now go into the Cox Plate before possibly running his last race in the big one. Where the Freedmans had trained their first winner back in 1979. The way they take old pugs back to the stadium to say goodbye. It was very, uh, it was a very good day. I hadn't been back to the race. But around the bend, 4.25 to go and Beachside has raced to the lead now. Beachside leads all own star. Superimposed moves up on the outside quickly now. And further back to Flagstaff, followed further back then Balance of Power. But Superimposed has shot away from them now. Superimposed kicked well clear. Beachside is second, followed by Flagstaff down the outside. And the next one, Balance of Power. But the champion, Superimposed, is racing away. Look at Superimposed, ease down on the line. And and Superimpose wins the cup.
Galilee second, close, but superimposed a shot away from them now. Superimposed kicked well clear. Beach side a second, followed by Flagstaff down the outside, and the next one, balance of power, but the champion, superimposed, is racing away. Look at superimposed, ease down on the line, and superimposed wins the cup. Galilee second, close for third. Either... Ladies and gentlemen, we've witnessed a magnificent win here this afternoon by this great champion, superimposed. And on behalf of the club, would like to thank... So it was a fitting finish to a glorious career. Fitting? Finish? <laughs> Get out of here. The match race was um, organised uh, by, by um, Letzelope and um, David, David Hayes is a bit of loosen up. And um, uh, the VATC committee agreed to, uh, to run the uh, match race at Caulfield and... Um, it created tremendous interest, and um, uh, my jockey, I've forgotten. Race on Wednesday, controversial for lots of reasons. The match race, $75,000 winner take all. Let's go to the race, and I'll ask Keith and Max their impressions. Let's elope versus better loosen up. They go to the 750 metre mark and the sprint is on now. And it's better loosen up about a half in front. The mare on the outside, back second. Let's a late dip and about to call in. And now she's getting closer to better loosen up. It's a battle coming up at the 600 metre mark. She's gone up to better loosen up and she's put her head in front. And they're both, it's a real war before the turn 500 to go. Let's a late on the outside, getting a half length in front. He gives her a crack with a whip. Clark calling on the old warrior back on the inside. Better loosen up down to the 300 metre mark. Let's a late's drawn a half length in front. Better loosen up is trying to come back on the inside. Let's a late the neck in front of the 150 metre mark. Better loosen up trying with every stride but the mare's got the edge near the line. Dittman throws everything at her and Let's a late wins the challenge a length and a half to better loosen up. A marvellous performance by two great horses here in the TAB Super Challenge. Well, Brian Martin summed it up very well. Two great horses. It was a bit of a shame to see Better Loosen Up, who is struggling. He's not uh, nearly the horse he was. He's been an all-time favourite, a tremendous horse. But I think there's hope for Let's Elope. There's definite hope, and whether she can win the Cox Plate, do we know who's going to ride her at this stage? Max, an enormous amount of money was bet on the race all around Australia, suggesting that it was a very good idea because there have been quite... Friedman had a record five starters in the big race. His top fancy, Herosity, was crying out for a dry track. Another, the gallant little mare mannerism, was his sentimental hope. Punters, though, couldn't get enough of the Andercross. And the New Zealand gelding was heavily backed to win at his first start in Melbourne. And they're racing in the Caulfield Cup and they've come away in a magnificent line too with Ram Yar and Chiak, our Nick bouncing out quickly. Viander Cross hard ridden about eight lengths from the leader out wide and then came further back my brilliant star Royal Magic going nowhere at the moment and Star of the Realm is back second last as Gatineau led to the turn Aquidity a length away followed by Dark Czar Mannerism here comes Viander Cross Viander Cross is coming with a great burst out wide they sweep for home now Gatineau on the inside Viander Cross has come very wide after him and they were followed by Mannerism coming home well and then came Aquidity it's Viander Cross out wide, Gatineau near the inside and Mannerism in the centre, clear of equity. Viander across the outside has taken the lead in the cup now, from Mannerism and then Gatineau and equity. Viander across in front of Mannerism Viander across answering the urgings of Shane Dyer head in front, Mannerism coming at him, Viander across, maybe a nose to Mannerism, who's booted right on the line and made it close, equity next from Sub-Zero and then Gatineau The horse wide on the turn and headed for home the Ander Cross is sweeping right around the outside off the track when they turn. The leader Gatineau from Mannerism and the Ander Cross coming down the outside in the home straight and starring back on the rail at the 250 metre mark and the Ander Cross. The Ander Cross, the Kiwi, has hit the front out wide from Gatineau. Mannerism coming with a run in the middle, but at the 100 metre mark and Shane Dye going for home on the Ander Cross. He's in front of Mannerism starting to peg it back. The Ander Cross, Mannerism down to the post. The Ander Cross, Mannerism, oh golly I don't know. V and across mannerism, nothing in it. Two links away, third in the race is Aquidity. A patient but brilliant ride by apprentice Damien Oliver enabled the battling little mare to wear down Viander Cross and score victory by only a nose. And Lee Friedman's incredible spring can... Close. Aquidity next from Sub-Zero and then Gatineau, followed by Royal a Magic. A tight photo went down. Mannerism's way. A high-class mare, this her fourth Group 1 win, adding to the Australasian Oaks Futurity and Vic Health Cups. And a big rap from her trainer. I mean, I've, I've long maintained that there's not much between Let's Elope and her when she's right, and I think she proved that today. She carried a bit of weight. 
first time over the 2-4 since she was a three-year-old and uh, it took a great racehorse to win that. Well, in the long history of the Caulfield Cup, in the long history of the Caulfield Cup, I doubt whether any one rider has been discussed quite so much as Shane dies after the race. And, um, well, I wouldn't have taken off as soon in the Caulfield Cup. I went a bit soon, but I'd, going wide, I'd go that wide every day because the track was better out there. But I didn't know the horse, and I'd never ridden the horse, and he hit a flat spot that day, and at the half mile he was off the bit, and I dug him up, and he got there far too soon, which caught me by surprise. The After the race. And, um, can you remember, between you, you've been going to the races for a fair while, uh, such a reaction to a ride? I can't, Bruce. Uh, Shandai was universally criticised yesterday. Uh, I really don't want to join the Shane and I bashing this morning, but I suppose uh, you, you must, and you must say it was deserved, because I think Shane uh, made errors of judgment that uh, cost me and across a Caulfield Cup. It wasn't Shane's day, it started off with stewards. I can't recall any sportsman being roasted as much for an error in judgment as Shane Dye. He was beaten a short half head. Uh, personally, I thought the and across should have won the race, possibly by half, three quarters of a length. Uh, nevertheless, uh, that's me sitting in the stand. Shane this morning is totally unrepentant. He thinks he's done the right thing. If he had to ride the race again, he would do that again. He Mannerism was magnificent yesterday. We shouldn't take anything away from her. Uh, in the last 40 years, there have been eight mares have won the cup. She carried two and a half kilos more yesterday than Leilani and Howe now. Six kilos more than Let's Elope. She carried more weight than any other mare in the last 40 years. She is outstanding. It was a brilliant ride. He's a great outstanding behind the Andercross. The Andercross, I would say, was one of the best Melbourne Cup trials I've ever seen. Sub-zero, reasonable, Castle Town, perhaps too old, Royal... But we discussed them. Let's have a look at the first of them that we're going to show you this morning. A remarkable performance by Ralph Habit, and this was the race that uh, Jim Cassidy, the very back of the field. They're racing up past the 800 metre mark now, instrumental a half length of Friends Venture as they come up towards the home turn, Colonial Spirit. Rough Habits about six lengths behind the third last horse, he's second last, and a in a seemingly impossible position, the favourite Rough Habit, as they make the home turn at the 400, and the leader's heading towards the outside section of the track. It's instrumental being tackled by Friends Venture on the outside, Southern States in the centre coming through, and over on the outside is Rare Chance, and back behind them then is Black Rouge, and now Rough Habit on the inside are starting to come through with a strong run, instrumental over on the the outside and a rare chance and rough habit look at rough habit and palm beach flying home white on the outside there is rare chance but rough habit over on the inside is absolutely flying home as they go to the line and uh, rough habit i think's won what a run rough habit i think's just beaten rare chance they're very well for next saturday's cox plate but at the turn he was a long second last then unwound one of the biggest runs in years at Caulfield. Side, and Rough Habit is still second last turning for home where Instrumental and Friends Venture turn in front of Southern States and then Rare Chance followed by Black Rouge. Instrumental in front down nearing the 200 metre mark now from Southern States after it along the inside. Rare Chance and Friends Venture out wide. It's now uh, Rare Chance out wide taking the lead. Rough Habit is getting right through along the inside. Have a look at this. Rough Habit, Rare Chance wide apart. Rough Habit on the inside. He's got there. Unbelievable, Rough Habits won it from... Rear. How did you feel at the 800 metre mark last and looking hopeless? Yeah, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> what, did you, what did you think had gone wrong? I don't know, I just thought, well, he may not be hitting out, there may be something wrong with him, you know, but um, Jimmy was going to ride him quiet, and uh, that's what he did. But uh, he, he is a good horse, you know. Very popular win. Yeah, yeah, it was. Now, yeah. the end, the end across... Uh... The ride by Jim Cassidy. I think, gentlemen, what a horse. He is a beauty, isn't he? He's a fantastic horse, and he's had uh, so many problems with uh, rashes, and even as late as yesterday, Bruce, he had uh, swelling on a hock. And uh, trainer John Wheeler believes that some of the rash problems and that sort of thing may have stemmed from his inoculations to go to Japan, as, as they did last year. Well, he's won 8 out of 10 now at 1,400 metres, Max, yet we tend to think of him more as a middle-distance fast stayer. What's your feeling? And I'm thinking Cox Plate with him. Oh, Bruce, Rough Habit is a racehorse. He's the sort of horse that the man from Snowy River would have liked to have ridden. <laughs> He'll give his all. He certainly has had a, an interrupted preparation. On the preparation, you, you really, I can't get enthusiastic about him in the Cox Plate, but John Wheeler said uh, yesterday, every time I ask this horse for a little bit extra, I've got to ask him for a little bit extra in a gallop on Tuesday, I've got to ask him for a lot extra in the Cox Plate, he gives it to me. He's produced some remarkable performances. His win in the Stradbroke was quite uh, outstanding this year. He's a great horse. I just wonder, Keith, at, at the Valley... Well, what the Cox Plate. Um, reserve my decision, but if wet naturalism, okay. if dry, coronation day. Okay, uh, Max? <laughs> naturalism.
Really? I thought you might be a Coronation Day man. Well, Naturalism's got the score on the board. Uh, wet or dry, very, very good horse. Will be very... Fitting? Finish? <laughs> Get out of here. Of quick tote calls. Uh, naturalism is still paying two dollars ten, odds of ten to nine. Let's elope is now out to five to one to two. There's about two or three for this great race, arguably the best collection of weight for age horses seen ever in the WS Cox plate. Contem field can be gauged by the fact that between them, the 14 starters had earned prize money exceeding 27 million dollars. From a race full of drama and excitement, emerged a true legend of the Australian turf. They stand to attention for the plate. They're off. And superimposed, Mr. De Battle, length and a half, and away brilliantly here, Kinja. Away brilliantly here, Kinja Tay flying from the outside with Coronation Day. Slight chance going up in the centre. Naturalism behind it with Palace Rain. And here's the thing. Kinja Tay goes up to slight chance at the 900 metre mark, a length and a half first. Coronation Day getting a nice run, a half away, fourth on the rail. Then Palace Rain, the Orfield Village. Naturalism is locked away on the inside now as they start to make their run. The mayor pulls to the outside, lets a lope around Citizen. Mannerism went back to the fence. I'll superimpose, peeling to the outside with Metalus, and up, there's a fall! There's a fall in the Cox Plate, and Naturalism lost the rider. Sinister is out of the race, and so is Palace Rain. Rough had a rider. Sinister is out of the race, and so is Palace Rain. Rough Habit has been knocked out of it now, and as the race to the 500 metre mark now, and the leader here is King Jatay, here comes Let's Alope. Let's Alope with a mighty run out wide, going up quickly now. King Jatay in the middle from your field village, followed by Superimpose. Let's Alope out wide as race to King Jatay. Slight chance fights back, down the outside, Superimpose. Let's Alope in the middle, Prince Salieri getting a run, better loosen up, and Superimpose. Let's Alope in front, Superimpose. Superimposed driving, super, I think super and to let's elope on the Cox plate. Third maybe King Jatay, the rail, better loosen up behind them. They're following. This is close behind the Palace Rain, Coronation Day as they pack right up, coming down the school side, 650 to go, and here come the challenges of the fall. There's a fall, Citizen is down, Citizen is down, and what's the other one? Well, it could be Naturalism may have come down. Citizen Naturalism, the two to come down and a fall. Round the turn they come, King Jatay is the leader, tackled by Muirfield Village and Slight chance still there, and here comes Let's Elope. Let's Elope on the outside, joining in, followed by Coronation Day and Mannerism, nowhere to go. Slight chance, King Chitay leading to the straight. Let's Elope down the outside, is flying home, and down the outside, superimposed, followed by Prince Salieri, halfway down the running. Let's Elope takes the lead in the Cox Plate. Superimposed, flying home, Let's Elope, superimposed, superimposed, Let's Elope, and superimposed. Superimposed, won the Cox Plate. From Let's Elope, King Jaday, third, fourth, better loosen up, slight chance, Prince Saleri. Further back, Coronation Day, followed who gets to Let's Elope in the very last two bounds, and Super Duper has got there in 1992 to win the Cox Plate, and what a great run the third. Second last is better loosen up as they bunch up down the side and rough have it. They come down with 700 to go and still King Jatay, a narrow leader. There's a fall. Palace Rain has come down. Oh, Naturalism's lost the rider. Naturalism has lost the rider. And uh, citizen has gone as well with Palace Rain running to the home turn now. And King Jatay just in front of Slight Chance. Here comes Let's Elope. The Mighty Mare's coming with a big run round the outside. They turn now and it's Let's Elope out wide. King Jatay and Slight Chance in front of Muirfield Village. They're into the straight. Let's Elope out wide. Getting the King to taste slight chance. Here comes Superimpose now. Let's elope in front. Superimpose and better loosen up. It's Let's elope in front. Super coming at her. They hit it. Might be Super and O's. Let's elope. Nothing in it with King to taste. It was rough and Superimpose prevailed. That was a man. last recognition of his true greatness in this his hometown his first ever group one win it was greg hall's finest hour his first ever ride on super they call it the cox plate mate where legends are made and that's what's happened today well, it was just the uh, one of the great cox plates i think it reminded me of the bone crusher finish you know but the drag tragedy for but, uh, 
that was probably the best performance I've ever seen from him, to lift like that over the last 50 metres. Fourth test, though, by the fifth place horse, Better Loosen Up, against the second place getter, Let's Elope, was upheld. So Let's Elope, second past the post, was relegated to fifth. The eight-year-old's first Group 1 success in Melbourne was also the eighth of his outstanding career. With his victory in the Cox Plate, Super lifted his career earnings to $5.6 million and became Australasia's highest ever stakes winner. The drama continued after the race as Simon Marshall, the rider of Better Loosen Up, protested successfully against the runner-up Let's Alert. There are a few hard luck. Pulling up, how do you think I felt? It's one stage in my life. I never wanted to come back to scale. Knowing that, the, the, you know, better loosen up should have won with me on him. I got a squeeze on the point. I had a look up ahead of me. I had a good two and a half to three horses room, maybe even four, to go inside Let's Elope. Let's Elope's then come in, shifted in rather quick, you know, very quick. Um, I wasn't quite able to get up inside her. And she just chopped me out. And to tell you the truth, I thought we were going to fall. Oh, his effort in the cock. Oh, his effort in the cock's plate was superb. Uh, he went on a very greatest moment in racing. It was a joy to see you there yesterday, Greg. After the cock's plate, it was magnificent, Keith. I don't think I've seen a rider come back to uh, such a claim in the way he just stood up in the irons. It was fantastic. Uh, Greg was jubilant, and uh, so he should have been because cock's plate uh, superimposed is Australia's favourite racehorse. He was at long odds yesterday, Bruce, but that didn't stop the fans giving him. Uh, uh, a hero's welcome back. What was it like for you, Greg, coming back uh, with 33,000 people there, the biggest crowd since Family of Man winning, and, and on such a courageous and popular racehorse? Lose or draw, but to win the Cox Plate's one thing, but to win it on that horse is just another. It was just. Well, I made the point at the beginning of the show, Keith and Greg, that uh, legends, they say that legends are made in the Cox Plate. Well, this one was already a legend. Uh, the, the legend was just enhanced and increased a little more, if that's possible. Yes, he's Australia's uh, record stakes earner now, Bruce. But this was a Cox Plate that superimposed one. It also was a Cox Plate that the connections of five horses claimed their horses should have won. It was a roughhouse Cox Plate. It was, Greg. We're about to go. A key point of the race, just looking at it there, Keith, was the fact that Greg was able to, on superimposed, keep Better Loosen Up in on the turn because had Better Loosen Up been able to come in underneath him and push him wider, Better Loosen Up might have won the Cox Plate and Superimposed mm. would not have. What about the... What any horse coming round me and uh, I just peeled away from the fence and then a the split second later, um, bang, 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 three come down like it was just a miracle that I never waited another half a second and gone over the top of myself and rough have it jumped all the falling horses and got away with, I mean... Well, he didn't really get away. He, no, got, he, he got, got cut and he, he didn't yeah. fall, but he was out of the... Let's have a look. Sure. Well, it's a good point about the Melbourne Cup because the race has taken on a different complexion. We'll show you the market a little later, but three superstar horses have suddenly become very much a factor. Superimposed, better loosen up, and probably in particular, let's elope. Good, let's elope, and better loosen up the two horses of the year for the past two seasons. Then you throw in the veteran superimposed, the Cox Plate winner. This is going to be a Melbourne Cup with a difference, isn't it? Let's have a look at the uh, Melbourne Cup market. Uh, it did change a bit yesterday. Viander Cross is five to one. Let's elope and Sub Zero, the horse of Greg Hall, will uh, ride at seven to one. Royal Magic. I am wearing the VR. Uh, the Moyer Stakes yesterday, this is a long way away from the Melbourne Cup. Uh, weight for age over a thousand. They brought together Clan O'Sullivan, Mukta, the two three-year-olds, and Scalacci. And uh, this was some run, and this is some racehorse. Off. Scalacci on the outside was first out in company there with Clan Vane Sovereign last of all. Barcarra Scalacci together coming down past the 600 by Link Solution. Half of Mr. Cube, you Matella and Vane Sovereign. They're making the home turn. Barcarra tackled by Scalacci. He's got his head in front as they straighten up the favourite Scalacci. Half a length to Barcarra, two lengths to Mukhtar and they're followed by Solution and back behind them Sublimator. But it's Scalacci in front halfway down the running is clear of Barcarra and Mukhtar finishing on. But Scalacci too brilliant for them. He'll win. Scalacci wins it well. Second home Mukhtar. Third by Curra. Matilla. Oliver gave the favourite his head now. Scalacci when they turned for home. He drew a half length in front now of Barcara. Three further back Mukka. But the big grey horse is going for the minion and he's got it. He's racing away. Scalacci races away to win by nearly two lengths. Mutka got up to run second. And those Well you've got to put him at the top of the tree now. He's uh, in rarefied class. He's up there with the, the greats of sprinters. No doubt about that. Clan O'Sullivan. Uh, I'll get back. He's one of the best sprinters, maybe the best since Vane. He's fantastic. You, you rate him with Manakato and Placid Oh, Arc? yes, I do. A ahead of Placid Arc, 
and rivaling Manakata. He is a very good horse. Bruce. Gee, Lee Friedman will be pleased because remember the day after the lightning, he said this might be another Manakata, and I was one of many that said, Lee, hang on, you're going a bit too fast, too quickly. Yes. Bruce, how long is it since you came across a horse that might even be too good for Australia? There just isn't anything for Scalacci That's, that's a problem Australia. with the programming. Basically, he runs either in the... Let's Elope's Melbourne Cup preparation took another backward step when track conditions worsened and Cummings scratched the bear from the McKinnon Stakes. However, the race did... Right on, sir. Racing in the McKinnon Stakes. Avi Andercross stood there and missed it three lengths. Castletown was a little bit slow into stride and Captain Cook goes straight to the front. Then Beander Cross, Royal Magic, a length and a half to Castletown. Betelou set up third last on the inside of Sub-Zero. And Rough Habits last, and he must be 25 to 30 lengths off the lead. Cap Captain Cook coming back to them. They have 800 metres to go, and he led by five lengths now. Second, Dr. Grace, third, Aquidity. Then came Viander Cross, followed by Prince Salieri, Royal Magic over on the outside. Going around them wider was Castletown as they run up to the turn, and they're bunched right up now. Rough Habit gets to third last on the outside of Better Loosen Up and Sub Zero last of all. Around the turn, 500 metres to go on the McKinnon, and the leader is still Captain Cook by a length. Aquidity switched back to the inside, joining in Dr. Grace. They were followed by Heroicity, running on strongly with Prince Salieri, and then Royal. Magic followed by Viander Cross. They have 300 metres to go. Prince Elier in front, trying to run it down on the outside. Heroicity, and here comes Rough Habit. Rough Habit's running on very strongly from them. Came Viander Cross, but Rough Habit loomed up 100 to go and hit the front. Rough Habit drew a length in front. Viander Cross played his fly. Viander Cross is the one. Viander Cross got up on the fence to win. Viander Cross beat Rough Habit. Close up on the race third, it's a photo between Heroicity, wide outs. And uh, I hope that silenced quite a few of Shane Dye's critics because uh, he's been a great jockey and uh, you know, he might have had one blemish on his career at course. By Dr Grace Prince Salieri, Heroicity wider out, Viander Cross is angling for a run on the inside, he's trying to get a run through as Heroicity's coming with a good run on the outside and then Rough Habit, they've got towards the 250 metre mark, Prince Salieri, Heroicity in front, down the outside now is Rough Habit coming with a run and then Viander Cross, it's Rough Habit racing up now, Rough Habit has hit the front of the last 100 metres, Viander Cross is dashing through, Viander Cross has grabbed the lead and Viander Cross, fantastic win beats Rough Abbott, third equity just in front of Heroism. Viander Cross looking for a run. Die goes back to the fence. Further out, Heroicity grabbing them now. Then Royal Magic better loosen up. Back second last with Castletown. Out wide, Heroicity and Prince Salieri got to the front from Aquidity. Viander Cross further back. And here's Rough Habit with a great run out wide. Here's the Kiwi, Rough Habit. Oh, look at him go, the little terror. Rough Habit's raced up to grab them now. Viander Cross getting up on the inside. It's coming back. Viander Cross comes back and wins. A magnificent win by Viander Cross. He's the win was a change in fortune for controversial jockey Shane Dye. Dye. It was a very good win. He never jumped. He missed the start three or four lengths. He just stood there for some reason. But it was an outstanding cup fry. You know, it's going to be awfully hard to beat, especially if a bit of rain keeps up. Viander Cross will now start a warm favourite in Tuesday's Melbourne Cup. Rough habit. The, uh, the uh, morning favourite for the McKinnon, but we saw a McKinnon stakes that we'll remember for a long time. We will, and I guess in the McKinnon, we're going to go into it in a moment. Viander Cross fell out of the gates. There was an almighty roar from 46,000 people. I think they all had Shane Dye on their mind. The horse ran into two dead ends in the straight. He had to switch course twice. It was a remarkable run. He is a champion horse at 2,000 metres. Whether he's a champion at 3,200, we're going to find out on Tuesday. It's one of the great... Uh... Sub-Zero was very good when you look at it there, Keith, and he's got an outstanding chance, particularly if the track's slow. Well, Bart Cummings and other top trainers rushed into a label Viand across the super horse, the new super horse of Australasian racing. The only thing, to my mind, that is standing between him and Melbourne, Cum uh, Melbourne Cup victory is that we doubt about his staying ability. I wonder about her chance of winning the Melbourne Cup might have gone after yesterday. What's the latest with her? <coughs> uh, she's officially notified the VRC 7th this morning she's not going to run. So she's out officially? That's right. So let's, oh, well, that's uh, huge news. Uh, let's elope officially scratch from the Melbourne Cup. Wonder you still didn't answer my question. Who's your best chance of the three? Well, I'd say after yesterday's racing and the way the weather is, I'd say sub-zero. He did run very well. To, from the Caulfield Cup was the best run from a Melbourne Cup point of view. Well, Van across and he went two miles, so I think he'll stay the Cup all right. <laughs> he was a great team to me that he could do it quite well. The, you know, the, the recipe for Melbourne Cup was always to be run second or third in the Caulfield Cup and avoid a penalty. Well, he did that not by intent, I'm sure, but it, uh, as it turned out, he's, he's uh, in penalty free. 
and uh, he's the one to beat, no doubt about that. Well, Cox, a quick look at the market and the barrier draw. The key horses, Viander Cross, about 5 to 2 at the moment, sub 0, 5 to 1. Viander Cross drawn through. Both be big shorteners if it's slow or heavy. They'll come into about 10 to 1, both of them. Better loosen up and superimpose. They'll either be about 12 to 1 or they'll be about 50 to 1. Depends on the weather. And, gentlemen, that's one of the biggest problems. Good track and one for a slow track. It could be heavy. It's not going to be any better than good. Maybe only dead. Keith, uh, your summary of your... You're sticking with uh, Viander Cross in either conditions. Yes, uh, I think Viander Cross is an outstanding... A good track to beat Superimpose. He's got a great record in this race, and I think he's going as well as ever at this distance. I think he'll run on very strongly if held up and sub-zero. And if the track is good, I think better loosen up. There's the light. They're racing. They're off. And down on the inside, one of the first out, Star of the Realm, away quickly, better loosen up, came out running near the inside. Heroicity began fast and tucky. Second, Skyflyer, Equidity's had a nice run over on the inside third. They're followed further back by Dr Grace. Better loosen up is over on the inside at the 8.50 metre mark. He lost a bit of ground around the outside of him, Ali Boy. Where's Viander Cross? Oh, he's still locked away badly on the inside. Sub-Zero's pulled out wide, he's making a run. Valdano and Cavalieri off the track are coming with runs now and further back. Big Baron about third last when they turn. Sir Winston first for home in the Melbourne Cup. A length and a half kicked away to in front of Aquidity. Then better loosen up, followed by Cavalieri. Valdano try to push his way clear and here's Sub-Zero down the outside and Castletown with a run. Sub-Zero might be the one he's raced up to Sir Winston from Cavalieri, Castletown and then Viander Cross getting out late from Ali Boy. Greg Hall has raced to the front on Sub-Zero. He goes for home in the cup and he might have a run. He's three in front. Viander Cross. Castletown trying hard, but it's the Grey's Cup. Sub Zero holding Viander Cross at bay, and Sub Zero wins the Melbourne Cup by two lengths. Second, Viander Cross, a length and a half away. Third, Castletown, a gap then to Mr. Eurostar. Aquidity off the fence, followed by Better Loosen Up. Viander Cross looking for a run back midfield. Running down to the 400, Sir Winston kick two in front. Here's Sub Zero down the outside, the Grey, and look at Castletown come into it. Sub Zero goes up on the outside of Sir Winston. 300 metres to go. Sub-Zero got a length and a half in front. Castletown running on it. Here's Viander Cross. Sub-Zero's kick. He's two and a half in front of Viander Cross and Castletown. Sub-Zero clear. Viander Cross won't get him. And the Melbourne Cup of 1992 belongs to Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero wins by two to Viander Cross and Castletown third. A break in the field of Mr. Eurostar. Run home again. $5.30 and $1.90 in Victoria for Sub-Zero. $2.10 for Viander Cross. Castletown, $3.40. Three magnificent horses have filled the trifecta. It's going to be pretty. Yeah, Greg, just one point. After looking at the race and the replays, many of us feel that Viander Cross may have been unlucky. Uh, what is, what is, is just looking from our point of view in the stand, looking at the replays, what's your opinion on that line? Now, I've had en enough of this um, Viander Cross being unlucky, actually. Max, and, you know, in all fairness to Shane, I mean, he's got a job to do, and... Look, I mean, you guys know better than anybody. At the end of that race, I mean, I'll put the question back on you. Do you think he was pulling any ground off me? Like, I'm talking about the last 50 or 100 metres. OK, he might have got that little bit of a hold-up there where I got carted into the race well and that. But he had, you know... You led him at one stage in the straight by six lengths. He pulled at least four off you. Uh, at the end of two miles, I think that's a tough task. But nevertheless, I'm not taking, I think, uh, the best ride, the best horse, perhaps on the day won it. But that's something we can argue about. I'm very interested in your... The Melbourne Cup, well, you know, unfortunately, it just rained that morning. And I didn't want rain because it was a two-horse race, Sub-Zero and Viander Cross, and it poured with rain. I held him up a bit. Uh, he got out a little bit late, but the other horse was too good, you know. The last bit, I wasn't making ground up on him. He'd ran a very... On the final day of the VRC's four-day meeting, Naturalism continued his Japan Cup campaign. In the Grace mistakes over 2,000 metres, the four-year-old carried 63 kilos and came through with flying... ...to them link up. I thought any event might... Gray Smith, favourite Naturalism in the green and white colours. And they race best is out three wide. Here's Naturalism four deep. Kaviri needs a run, followed by Cool Credit and Baron Seedy behind them. 300 metres left to go. Silk Ali in front. Now Naturalism called on. Kaviri looks for a run at best is running on. Silk Ali 250 to go. A length and a half in front. Naturalism is flat trying to wear him down from Kaviri and Cool Credit from a long way back. Silk Ali in front. Naturalism wearing him down and then Cool Credit. Naturalism goes up the Silk Ali. Naturalism puts his head in front and Naturalism. One and a short half head to Silk Ali and Cool Credit third.
Then Kaveri and Mango. Number one going. Silk Ali out in front at the 200. Silk Ali in front. He's hit the pull the whip on Naturalism, trying very hard. It's still Silk Ali about a length in front. Naturalism is answering the urgings of Dittman. Naturalism with a big weight. He's raced. He's put his nose in front. Silk Ali kicks Naturalism a nose, Silk Ali. As the weather and uh, He was going to have to give so much weight away. And I remember George Moore saying to my father years ago that um, he said, once horses get over 2,000 metres, they start having to carry nine stone plus. He said, it's very hard from the wind. Oh, this horse is carrying nearly 10 stone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a sign of a very good horse, isn't it? Because, I mean... Uh... One of the anomalies of this spring has been, Max, that naturalism hasn't won a Group 1 race. And I think people will feel in a way that he's been the horse of the spring, yet he hasn't won at Group 1 level. That is a great race horse. I'd like to ask Michael Clark, can he win the Japan Cup? You should know, Michael. You're the, the only Australian jockey to have won it. I think he can, Max. He, he's a, a great horse where he can quicken uh, in his race, and he's got a, a, a tremendous sprint. Very hard to beat in the Japan Cup. And they're all set to go. That's on, and they're off and racing. Caught the well. 500 metres to go, and it's caught Japan by two lengths. Captain Cook second, Beachside third, Mannerism runs on. Then came Rough Habit, Mountain Rules starting to run on strongly. 300 metres to go, Court Chaban in front, but here comes Rough Habit. Rough Habit's after Court Chaban quickly, he cruised up the favourite. Three lengths away, NASA Rocket running on, and then Beachside followed by Mountain Rule. 200 metres to go though, and Rough Habit got away. A half in front of Court Chaban, who's kicking back. Rough Habit just in front, Court Chaban kicking back, and he won. Court Chaban kicked back the win on the inside, beat Rough Habit a half head. Three away third, NASA strongly. 300 metres to go, Court Chaban in front, but here comes Rough Habit. Rough Habit's after Court Chaban quickly, he cruised up the favourite. Three lengths away, NASA Rocket running on him in beach side, followed by Mountain Rule. 200 metres to go though, and Rough Habit got away. A half in front of Court Chaban, who's kicking back. Rough Habit just in front, Court Chaban kicking back, and he won. Court Chaban kicked back the win on the inside, beat Rough Habit a half head. Three away third, NASA Rocket. Followed in. It was on all the way. That's and a new record too, Gary. That's well, a new track record. I taking point three off the previous record. Well, there's a... Trotting, wasn't he? They <laughs> no, don't pay at the film. <laughs> oh, oh, Max, yeah. don't I know. <laughs> Your title have been the queue there, though, weren't yes, you? Oh, it, it was home. It was home, and has, I thought Jim Cassidy rode extremely well. He's well, every commentator made a rep. <laughs> <laughs> say something he, again. I, I'd say uh, he had 59 kilos. I'd say if he had 56, he would have stayed the distance all right. Uh, it was a, a course record. It was running at very fast time. Uh, he was conceding 10 kilos, obviously, to a very dour stayer. Uh, it was just a beat him, but Rough Habit is still an outstanding race. A year ago, I'd like Coach, a year ago, I'd like Coach a band to go to Perth, and would you be interested with his lightweight? And have a look at the Honda. It was a spectacular win in the end for Planet Royal. He came with a steaming run. At the 9.50 metre mark, Prince of Praise carting them along a half to solve at second. Three to Dan Jicky out wide and further back. Matinee Idol followed by Excited Angel and pulled out wide then. His Palm Beach vows back to the rail from Prince Alderia. Fairway back from Let's Hurry T. Habit, Black Sun and Planet Ruler. Homeward bound Solvit on the outside of Prince of Praise. They're a length and a half to Soho Square. Big Dreams trying to get out from further back then ready to explode. And Vow's about to get its way clear. Then take the road. Dan Jicky down the outside. Prince Alderia's not in the race. Soho Square got to Solvit. Prince of Praise at the 250 metre mark from Vow's. And then Dan Jicky followed by take the road the leader here is Soho Square Vows coming after it and old Planet Ruler with a great run out wide Soho Square in front Vows Planet Ruler Planet Ruler over the top of them and Planet Ruler Planet Ruler's got up to win the Honda from either Soho Square and Vows Next down the outsiders take the road. It's Prince of Praise at the 300 and Solvit coming at them. Soho Square on the outside from take the road. Then came Dan Jicky, three in line at the 200 metre mark and taking the lead Soho Square from Solvit. Prince of Praise, here's Vows finishing well now. And down the outsiders, Planet Ruler. Soho Square in front, Planet Ruler's flashing home and the old fella Planet Ruler's won it. Planet Ruler out wide from Soho Square and Vows in a... Running down with 300 metres to go, Solvit the outsider, Prince of Praise. Soho Square joins in, Bows getting out, take the road, Dan Jeeky wide, then Big Dreams. Soho Square in front, 150 to go, Soho Square the leader. Bows wearing it down and Planet Ruler late down the outside. Soho Square in front, Planet Ruler swapping them and Planet Ruler's got up. Planet Ruler's got up to beat Soho Square and Bows. Then Excited Angel close up. Well, an upset, but uh, i got to say this horse is one of the best I've seen particularly here at Flemington. Number two, Planet Ruler, written by Michael Clark, has flashed mistakes. 
He's a great horse at Flemington, uh, Danny. He always seems to produce his best runs. And you did mention to me you thought he was a good... And, uh, you know, uh, that, he's an eight-year-old, but uh, he's just needed a Flemington fast track and uh, back over a mile, ideal conditions, plenty of pace. He put, put up one of his Gadsden finishes. Probably the eight-year-old Planet Ruler has been a marvellous campaigner in each of his seven seasons of racing. The Honda Stakes was the fifth Group 1 success of his career. Since of a mile and run very fast time. He was the oldest horse in the race at eight years and probably we did overlook that he'd won twice before at Group 1 level at that distance, the George Main and the Turek Handicap. Yes, and uh, 55 kilos yesterday, Keith, for him was a probably a luxury weight. Even though he's been out of form a little bit, he does take a, a little bit of racing to come, right? And yes, more distance. Hasn't it been a great season for eight-year-olds, though? The thing with this fellow, too, is that his injury was uh, probably worse and better loosen up. So, and, and he's been able to make this remarkable recovery, hasn't he, Planet Ruler? I think they were very unlucky to Haystable yesterday with Planet Ruler. He was steaming home at the end of the winter bottom. What a good horse this Barossa boy is. Let's have a look at the final stages of the other big race from Perth with Barossa boy holding out Planet Ruler. At the 700, Asian Incline held together with them. Dr. Golly's off, Pago's King doing nothing midfield. And then Medicine Kid, Milady's Jewel, Planet Ruler badly barricaded. And Straight No Isis last of all around the bend into the straight with Asian Incline the leader. Now Barossa Boy out, Pago Escort is gone. Then Welcome Night Bows, Pago's King gone. And Dr. Golly, Medicine Kid down the outside. But Barossa Boy, he burst to the lead, it's over. Barossa Boy shot clear welcome night planet ruler flying but barossa boy in front and barossa boy won about a half house pie goes king gone and dr golly medicine kid down the outside but barossa boy he burst to the lead it's over barossa boy shot clear welcome night planet ruler flying but barossa boy in front and barossa boy won about a half length planet ruler an enormous run second welcome night or bows and a photo there for third Last start was in the Gadsden, 16 out of 20, but that's not his normal form. Max, 22 wins from 43, over the million dollars. He's a terrific horse. And gee, their second horse is flying Planet Ruler. I think the honours go to Planet Ruler. To give a horse like Barossa Boy that much start, to finish that well, to be that unlucky, obviously Planet Ruler, at his age, still has plenty of racing left in him. I thought it was a... Race course is some of the best race horses in the world prepared for the richest horse race in the world, the Japan Cup. Today, more than 190,000 will pack the course as a field of 14 competes for the winner's check of one and three quarter million dollars. The Australian... They betting yesterday in Sydney, the bookmakers first. $53 million has been bet in Japan already as we're going to take a look at the odds right around the world. Now take note, that's the Japan market. Naturalism is at 13 to 2 with Let's Elope. They're equal second favourites behind User Friendly. 53 million so far in that Japan market. The Super Tab, now the TAB is open in Victoria today. I always say that she's had the preparation of naturalism. That's why I think he'll beat her. But our horses are there. Well, Philly, good luck to her. But I'm going to disagree with you, Max and uh, Keith. I think Let's Elope will win today. I think she's the best horse I've seen here for a long time. And I reckon Bart's got her at the top. We'll see who's right. Now they're ready. They're racing. They're off. And they're away to a very good start to user friendly down on the inside. Naturalism away nicely. Behind those is Let's Elope. And the first out third, and that is user friendly about three or four lengths further back in the field. Then came Naturalism, who's now gone to fourth over along the inside. Then came Hishima Shogun further back in the field. Then came Torque Takeo a length and a half to Akuno Dictus, Yamaman Global, Vertamon. Let's Elope back second last, followed further back by Hishima Saru as they come up to the bend and the leader Legacy World they're about to run for home in the Japan Cup and Legacy World first for home here's user friendly on the outside Dr. Devia struggling they're followed further back by under the whip of the head of the others Naturalism who's going back to the inside and starting to come home well as they come down with 300 metres to go Naturalism got up on the inside Torquay take AO out wider on the track and swept up to it Naturalism the inside 200 out Torquay take AO followed by Yanomen Global Torquay take AO and naturalism, a hundred ago. go. Torquay, take AO and naturalism, naturalism. Torquay, take AO, strides the strides from dear Dr. Torquay, take AO and Torquay, take AO has won the cup ahead on the post of naturalism. Third home of the the inside, 200 out, Torquay, take AO, followed by Yamamen Global. Torquay, take AO and naturalism, a hundred ago. go. Torquay, take AO and naturalism, naturalism. Torquay, take AO, strides the strides from dear Dr. Torquay, take AO and Torquay, take AO. Has won the cup ahead on the top.
face of naturalism. Third home of the races, dear doctor. They cleared out to Legacy World, who ran fourth from there, so they set back. In flashes in the frame, number 14, Torquay Takeo, the horse of the year of last year, has defeated naturalism, who went back to the inside in the straight. And all but got on terms with a seven and nine for the night. And there's a salute, an incredible sight of over 140,000 people. 140,000 raw for a carby. Of each crowd, very emotional race I felt from uh, from everybody's point of view. Uh, Keith Naturalism just failing, let's elope unfortunately bleeding, Mick Dipman producing one of the great rides. What a day it was. Yes, uh, put all that together and, and that's exactly what the Japan Cup turned out to be, Bruce. Uh, Absolutely. Rang me on Sunday night from Japan, so excited about your ride. The horse himself, did you feel going into the race uh, with the hoof problem that uh, he was going to be very much disadvantage? Well, uh, early in the morning, um, Lee was quite worried about him, but, um, you know, once I got on to the... because he was quite lame early in the morning, but uh, with the horse, and as soon as I saw Lee's face, I knew something. But he was lame right up until, oh, probably only a couple of hours before he went to the races. And well, he... It's extraordinary, isn't it? Quite unbelievable that the horse could run so well with, the, with such a, a setback. Mick, let's go... Uh, when he dashed through, I thought he was going to win, but the, the winner joined me on the outside reasonably quickly and looked to have something in hand. But uh, he fought back very strongly, this horse, and uh, it was only in the last 50 metres that he started to get the best of me. Give yourself a, so you obviously within that final furlong, 200 metres, Mick, you fancied your chances right up until about 50 to go. I thought uh, with 100 metres to go that I'd kick back and beat him. But he just started to get the best of me in the last, uh, in the last 50 metres of the race. When you... Sullivan. Over in the outside of that run as they head round the turn with Shirazel. Namui's pretty well back and Lance O'Sullivan trying to ride it now to get somewhere close to them. And eight less than 400 left. The Vishki in front but going to it is Freedom of Scope. The outside here comes clear cut and rhythm. Down the outside where's the favourite Namui? has got a mile of ground to make up. At the moment clear cut dash to the front 180 metres to go from rhythm. Here comes the favourite Namui. What a finish it's putting in down the outside. Clear cut in front but Namui's mowing them down. What a performance from this filly. The Mui won it by two links going away. Clear cut dash to the front, 180 metres to go from rhythm. Here comes the favourite, the Mui. What a finish it's putting in down the outside. Clear cut in front, but the Mui's mowing them down. What a performance from this filly. The Mui won it by two links going away. Clear cut rhythm. Acres from the family that produced Hula Chief and Hula Drum, who were both Group 1 winners in Australia. Nim Yu and Hula Strike clashed at their next appearance, the Bayer Classic over 1,600 metres. Lance O'Sullivan preferred to ride the filly, who vindicated his choice with an easy win. When Captive Edition will swing the corner first. Sir Willie Montague away from the fence to come out after him. Wider out Kaya Lee. Clear cut behind them. Here's Hula Strike and Namui both to the outside. It's Captive Edition in front. From Sir Willie Montague, Namui and Hula Strike. State King the inside, but they haven't got Captive Edition. Here's Namui. Namui going out to Captive Edition. She's grabbed him. She is brilliant. Namui and Namui. Namui and Hula Strike. State King the the inside but they haven't got captive edition here's Namui Namui going out to captive edition she's grabbed him she is brilliant Namui and Namui has beaten captive Garden is the best filly seen in New Zealand for several years Namui is a daughter of Star Way she also run on boxing day is the New Zealand derby at Ellerslie promising three-year-old the phantom chance had made his racing debut in October and in the classic, he was going for his sixth successive win. Into the straight, 400 to go, and shrewd operator slipped away, but coming out at all in front, and here's the Phantom Chance after them, three wide. Cup of Edition coming into it, too. The Phantom Chance has got the lead. Cup of Edition is fighting strong on the outside. Noel Captain starting to run on. Cup of Edition coming back at the Phantom Chance. The Phantom Chance and Cup of Edition down to a nice old go. The Phantom Chance, the inside Cup of Edition might have got his nose in front, he has. And coming back at him, the Phantom Chance, there's nothing. Its nose is almost dead heat. I don't care. The Phantom Chance, the inside Cup of Edition. Might have got his nose in front, he has. And coming back at him, the Phantom Chance, there's nothing. Its nose is almost dead heat, I don't care. The Phantom Chance thinks he's got it on the inside, but the outside was cut of a vision, possibly noses that In a punishing finish, the Phantom Chance gained a narrow win in track record time. The, prom the rising stars on the New Zealand racing scene is Calm Harbour. A winner of six races from seven starts, 
the four-year-old was having his first test at Group 1 level in the Thornton Mile. Full charge on the outside of Calm Harbour. Full charge has hit the front now. Calm Harbour's giving on the inside though. Then we've got Moiray Romani Conti from a fair way back. O'Sullivan asked Calm Harbour. He dug in deep and found plenty. Calm Harbour with 150 metres to go. Two lengths, Romani Conti, Moiray. He is a doozy. Calm Harbour. Calm Harbour, nearly three lengths, Romani Conti. Two way back. O'Sullivan asked Calm Harbour. He dug in deep and found plenty. Calm Harbour with 150 metres to go. Two lengths, Romani Conti, Moy Ray. He is a doozy. Come Harbour. Come Harbour, nearly three lengths, Romani Conti. Two and a half. Lance O'Sullivan's fifth Group 1 success of the season was achieved very comfortably. We'll see more of Come Harbour. The brilliant Scalacci returned to racing in mid January with a win in the Rubiton Stakes. They're off. And Scalacci first into stride from Ellie Shan, beginning very quickly as Tangi and Prince the centre, Mr. Cube. And they were followed by King Marauding. 100 metres left to go. King Marauding is the leader. A length and a half, Tangi and Prince Scalacci third. And then Riddell from there, followed by Ellie Shan. And back behind them is Mr. Cube. Now Scalacci is starting to stretch out. He's coming after these leaders. Mr. On the inside there, King Marauding in the centre. Tangi and Prince and Scalacci trying to get to them. Tangi and Prince is the leader. Scalacci down the outside is grabbing them. Scalacci's level. Scalacci and Tangi and Prince. Scalacci. Scalacci, I think, has got there from Tangent Prince. King Marauding flying home, Mr. Cube. ...with him, Scalacci, Tangent Prince get to the front from King Marauding. Tangent Prince in front, Scalacci under pressure. Tangent Prince a neck in front of King Marauding. Scalacci on the outside, lunging near the line. The Grey puts a big bound in and gets up. Yes, Scalacci on the post. Over Ellie Shan is last 55. It's a new record. This yeah. slow to get... Scalacci broke the Australian record at uh, Sandown. I think uh, Scalacci is uh, a champion sprinter and this is why he is a champion. He knows where the winning post is. When it's required, he pulls it out. He gets to the line. I... Scalacci had his next start in the Group 1 William Reed Stakes at Mooney Valley. Scalacci under some pressure at the 400 metre mark. Tangi and Prince Jack pull together. A length further back. Scalacci throwing everything at it now. Oliver there followed by Spanish Mix and further back. King Marauding. Razor rhythm pull to the outside. Tangi and Prince travelling well. Put his head in front of Jack Pill when they turn. A length further back. Scalacci from Spanish Mix. Tangi and Prince in front. Scalacci not getting there at the moment. Down the outside. Razor rhythm with a late run. Scalacci after Tangi and Prince getting a run through. Spanish Mix who drives through. Spanish Mix. Spanish Mix I think has got through to win from the Tangian Prince and Scalacci in a great go. At the moment, down the outside, Razor Rhythm with a late run. Scalacci after Tangian Prince getting a run through. Spanish Mix who drives through. Spanish Mix. Spanish Mix, I think, has got through to win from either Tangian Prince and Scalacci in a great go. Spanish Mix caused an upset in the William Rigg to record her... ...the line. I think on the face value... ...out of time, uh, but tell us about Let's Elope very quickly. Let's Elope's off to America. She has run her last race in Australia. She leaves on Tuesday week, Bruce, and uh, she'll race there with the aid of drugs that are uh, banned in Australia for bleeders. ...to racing in the autumn of 1992, Better Loosen Up's comeback had been plagued by a series of frustrating events for trainer David Hayes. In his opinion... Only bad luck in running had prevented the seven-year-old from winning the Cox Plate. In early February, the champ produced a first-up run at Morfordville that convinced Hayes that Better Loosen Up was close to a win. Next was Better Loosen Up around Transplant Ladin, five to Hot Arch. On the swing, 400 out. Spondula from Fapiano's Girl. Wilson is ease. Redelver off their heels. Moves up three deep. Valkanite was next. Down the outside. Colebrook is running a bit of a race and then kicks. It's Fapiano's Girl at the 200. She's holding this big, powerful chestnut, Redelver. Colebrook is now coming out very wide on the track. And look at Better Loosen Up, Rocket Home. And Hot Arch is coming with him. Better Loosen Up and Hot Arch. They go to the line. Hot Arch. Hot Arch has won. Better loosen up has run one of the best races of his career. Career. He's either second. Oh, I'd love to be able to see David Hayes' face at the moment. This bloke has very nearly won the race. His run was sensational that day. Uh, he was beaten narrowly in 1,100 metre, and even at his best, I don't think I could have expected him to run much better. He was back, had his foot right back on the till and ready to win, and in his final gallop for the uh, blamey, which by chance wasn't a strong blamey and uh, we're all primed up for him to have his first win back and he just dipped in his gallop and and he went and uh, it was just a tragedy but uh, the horse uh, he's fine now uh, but um, we've decided to retire the horse because we just don't want to put him at risk less than a week later better loosen up injured a tendon in a track gallop and his retirement was immediately announced
a winner of $4.7 million in stakes and eight Group 1 races, including the Japan Cup. Better loosen up, will spend his retirement at Lindsay Park. People around the world stand up and take note, and he, he did what Farlap had done some 60 years earlier, and that to me is just at the, the, the top of the mountain. At day's end, never let it be said Better Loosen Up didn't go the distance. Never. The mighty Superimpose was retired a few days later. With career earnings of $5.6 million, Super retired as Australia's greatest stakes-winning thoroughbred. The eight-year-old created racing history by winning four feature mile races at Randwick and put the seal on his outstanding career with a popular victory in Australasia's greatest weight for age race, the Cox Plate. Lost more, but very few can do what he did over such a long period of time, and you know, it will always be a very fond memory of him. I won't be alive to see the next horse win four Randwick miles, and I, and I don't think anyone will live to see one win four Randwick miles, uh, starting with 57 in the weights. So he'll have that record on his own, and I don't think there'll be too many eight-year-olds win Cox Plates either, so. If that's the definition of a champion, then he's a champion. With tremendous potential was Coronation Tingley Cold. With tremendous potential was Coronation Day. With two Group 1 wins to his credit during the spring, the three-year-old looked poised for a successful autumn campaign following this first up win. Further back, Valance Star followed by Sekulu and Cohort as they top the rise where preeminence grabbed the lead clear of Atlantic Brave and Zoff. Further out, Eastern Approaches, Sublimator still there. Past the 200, preeminence in front from Sublimate. Legal Agent closer to the inside. Here's Coronation Day. Coronation Day with giant strides is gobbling them up. He's coming home brilliantly. He'll win. Coronation Day is back with a vengeance. Chagall has jumped out of the ground. Unfortunately, this was the last run of Coronation Day's short but successful career. While being trained for the Doncaster Handicap, the Colt suffered a leg injury, forcing him into early retirement. Coronation Day will commence his stud career. In the Light Fingers stake, several of our best fillies launched their autumn campaigns. The winner was to go on and prove herself to be one of the best of her generation. Burst is even wider, and then Flitter followed by Mahia, and well back final answer Crinoline, and Love comes to town as they come over the rise, past the 400 mark, and skating shot to the front on top of the hill. She burst away about three lengths on Closhan. Slight chance on the outside, running on Gamely, followed by Burst, but skating is well clear with 150 to go. Closhan and Slight Chance are making absolutely no headway, neither is Burst, and it is all skating. Skating is going to win the Light Fingers in great style. Skating beats Slight Chance all or the fast finishing flitter, not much in it for second. Down in Melbourne, the wait for age performers were in action at Flemington in the Group 2 Blamey Stakes. 500 left to go. Lovey for home. By two lengths, Prince Salieri. Frontier boy under pressure. He eases out on Jolly Old Mac. Three wide and four wide comes Mannerism with Walter Last. Lovey goes for home at the 300. Two lengths, Prince Salieri coming after her. Jolly Old Mac and Mannerism are both making runs together down the outside. Lovey at the 200 metre mark. By a length, Prince Salieri. Mannerism and Jolly Old Mac are taking all the time in the world to get there. Four across the track now. And Prince Salieri in the centre. And Lovey, it's four across the track now with Prince Salieri going home better and he's won it. Prince Salieri has won it from either Jolly Old... Throughout his career, Prince Salieri was an honest and consistent competitor at the highest level. The blade tired at the end of the season and will stand at Ardsley Stud in New Zealand. The lightning stakes marked the emergence of the brilliant Scalacci. On the anniversary of his first Group 1 success, the four-year-old showed why he is the best sprinter seen in Australia for some time. It's clever Zoe in front at the 300, only about two lengths, Uzuk. Spanish mix and then a length and a half to Scalacci, given full ball. Clever Zoe at the 200 in front of Uzuk, Spanish mix, and then Scalacci. It's clever Zoe in front, 100 out. Here comes Scalacci, he's hitting top gear now. Clever Zoe in neck, but Scalacci, the big grey flash is going to win it. Scalacci from Clever Zoe, Uzuk is third. It's clever Zoe in front of the 300, only about two lengths, Uzuk. Spanish mix and then a length and a half to Scalacci, given full ball. Clever Zoe at the 200 in front of Uzuk, Spanish mix, and then Scalacci. It's clever Zoe in front, 100 out. Here comes Scalacci, he's hitting top gear now. Clever Zoe in neck, but Scalacci, the big grey flash is going to win it. Scalacci from Clever Zoe, Uzuk is third, then came...
across the 800 to go. It was a super run. At 650 yards, still by 12 lengths to Derbridge, who's setting sail after him now. In third place is Fra, two and a half lengths further back, hard ridden as Corndaler. And the other two not responding at the moment, star of the realm and sub zero as they come up towards the home turner. Minyama by six lengths to Derbridge, a length away Fra, four lengths to Corndale, star of the realm. And sub zero as they make the home turn with 350 metres left to go. And Minyama coming back to the field, led only three lengths to Derbridge, is now in hot pursuit, followed by Fra, star of the realm, running on down the outside. He's coming home strongly, star of the realm, as they come to the 200, Minyama is still the leader. Star of the Realm on the outside is the danger though. He's grabbed the lead very quickly, Star of the Realm. He's well clear now of Fra. Durbridge is beaten, but Star of the Realm drawing away for a big win. Star of the Realm goes on to score. He's won by four lengths to Fra, getting up for third, two lengths away, Sub-Zero. He's coming home strongly, Star of the Realm, as they come to the 200, Minyama is still the leader. Star of the Realm on the outside is the danger though. He's grabbed the lead very quickly, Star of the Realm. He's well clear now of Fra. Durbridge is beaten, but Star of the Realm drawing away for a big win. Star of the Realm goes on to score. He's won by four lengths to Fra, getting up for third, two lengths away, Sub-Zero. Well, we should mention Sub-Zero's run too. It was very good. Yes, the most interesting question from yesterday was Star of the Realm. Is he a, a really top horse or is he one of these horses that wins one race in a preparation? He did it in the derby, he did it during the spring. Yesterday he looked, uh, well, he looked like naturalism and Viander Cross rolled into one, didn't he? Or well, you are. But uh, he looked uh, like a group one winner uh, left, right and centre yesterday. Bruce, naturalism and Viander Cross rolled in together. Well, he looked just He's yesterday. He's not in their class. Well, just yesterday. No, no, no. Hey, Max, that I'm with you this time. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, Max, you weren't, at, you weren't at Flemington today. You beat naturalism in the derby. Yes, I was there. Okay. Uh, and, and, and it was a fluke. Like a fluke? A fluke. F-L-U-K-E. Is that how we spell it, Keith? Yeah, it sure is. That's it, Max. That's be, it. Max, be careful with your background when you spell words on TV. But I'll tell you what I'll do. <laughs> I'll... Uh, this horse can beat naturalism this time in. <laughs> oh, what, with a, the aid of a tow truck? <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the tow truck yesterday. He looked like he might have needed it. In New Zealand, the Lion Brown Stakes over 1,400. Rough Habit, the favourite. Let's look at the winner, Viander Cross, and we'll discuss his prospects for the Australian Cup. About or 12 or 13 lengths first to last. They get to the 600 and the leaders now not so. From quick score, the outside, Lord Trident lying third from Capestead, Rough Harbour and uh, Peony Royal. On the inside of these, into Hypervein, they're followed by Fun Affair, the end across, well back in the field as they come to the turn, Javelin, Rough Habit, and last of all is Greg. Round the turn and the Lion Brown about 3.50 to go and not so is the leader. Over on the outside then to quick score. Coming into it on the inside is Lord. Coming into it on the inside is Lord. Tried oh, here comes Viander Cross. He's made a great run. He's got to the lead very quickly. Coming after him, Cape Stand. Rough Habit's emerging late. Viander Cross has got it sewn up. He's three lengths in front. Rough Habit finishing well. Cape Stand. And on the inside, Lord Tried and a late run from Javelin. But oh, Viander Cross has killed them. Javelin second and Rough Habit third. And a quick score coming into it on the inside. Inside is Lord Tried. Oh, here comes Viander Cross. He's made a great run. He's got to the lead very quickly. Coming after him, Cape Stand. Rough Habit's emerging late. Viander Cross has got it sewn up. He's three lengths in front. Rough Habit finishing well. Cape Stand. And on the inside, Lord Tried. And a late run from Javelin. But oh, Viander Cross has killed them. Javelin second and Rough Habit third. That'll be a run on the side. Gee, Max, he looked as good as Star of the Realm and Naturalism wrapped into one, didn't he? <laughs> Leave Star of the Realm out of that class, Bruce. There is a racehorse. Uh, I, I'm a great admirer of Naturalism, but by gee, he's, he's going to have his hooves full keeping up with the Viander Cross, particularly... Uh, uh, well, I just wonder which way Mick Dittman's going to go now, but... Uh, he's going to jump on... And John Wheeler, who prepared uh, Rough Habit for that race, but will prepare... Uh, Viander Cross here said it was the best one he's ever seen. It was frightening, wasn't it? Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, Max, we've got a bit to look forward to, particularly in Sydney. There's no doubt about it. You're going to see the best, best races this autumn because the Australian Cup's a very good race, but I think the big clash will be Naturalism, Viander Cross and, uh, dare I say, Star of the Realm when they get together in Sydney, Max. He doesn't go as well. Look at the autumn. Some the star attraction in the Apollo Stakes. Just imagine, uh, had he won the Japan Cup, the adulation in which he would have been held, even in finishing second, of course, He's been rocketed to prominence on the uh, turf all over the world. Last as they near the corner, this race is developing into a sprint, coming out four wide and is starting to stoke up as they straighten. Into the home stretch and Burst and Mahaya, the two leaders over Kinjate. Naturalism couldn't sprint with them after they turn for home. He's taking a while.
while to get going and Burst is clear. Here he comes now, Naturalism. Took him a little while to get going, but he's coming after Burst. He's got them covered. Naturalism grabs the lead in the shadows of the post and the great horse is back with a vengeance. Naturalism beat King Jatay. Burst is third. Naturalism couldn't sprint with them after they turned for home. He's taking a while to get going and Burst is clear. Here he comes now, Naturalism. Took him a little while to get going, but he's coming after Burst. He's got them covered. Naturalism grabs the lead in the shadows of the post and the great horse is back with a vengeance. Naturalism beat King Jatay. Burst is third. And this a couple of strides the there. The I was saying this is going to be tougher than I thought. But now he's hitting he top gear. Have a look at him get to the line, this bloke. <laughs> we've got him now. No, he's sweet. Just uh, done his job. Had a little look over the shoulder. And that's enough. Oh, Ian Craig, take care. There's a buddy race caller in the wings. Uh, Max, you, actually, you couldn't see Max. I can see him in Sydney at the moment. He pulled the whip halfway down the street. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I wouldn't be any good at the caper. I've got to pull the whip and give a cheer. <laughs> Max, it was perfect to as we've said, naturalism is something special. Gee, you might be as good a star of the realm, Keith, on that run, mightn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on naturalism when they clash now. Oh, it's He's a very good horse, the best in Australia, but we're going to see his genuine challenger at Caulfield this afternoon, Viander Cross, Bruce, 5-2 to two on in his essay at the Heath today. Yes, that, uh, up, that clash between naturalism and Viander Cross is a bit like Waverley Star and Bone Crusher in 86. I can't remember such an exciting build-up to two horses going against one another yeah. for a long time. Stakes. Several two-year-olds emerged as serious contenders, but none were as impressive as the filly Lady Jackie O. Lady Jackie O took the lead now from Azawir and then Princess Shauna dropping out of it, followed by Crown of Seton. Less than 200 out now, and this is Home and Hose, Lady Jackie O. Raced away four in front of Azawir, Crown of Seton, Princess Shauna. But Lady Jackie O back to her best form, strolls home. Lady Jackie O by six on the post. Second as Run off. Dittman tested the four-year-old in the Carlion Cup. Shortcut took the lead from Narani fighting back and there's still about three lengths in front of Eander Cross who's getting to a clear third on the inside of Notwith in front of Eander Cross who's getting to a clear third on the inside of Notwithstanding coming around the turn now and it's Narani and Shortcut in front but he eases off the fence on Viander Cross now and the champion New Zealander races up alongside them it's Viander Cross taking the lead for Dittman gives him a slap with the whip he got a length and a half in front now drawing clear from Spring Hill Ed going to second and then Shortcut native Neptune finishing well but the champion from Kiwi, land to Viander Cross wins it, eased up by three lengths. Viander Cross gathers the leaders up quickly at the 200 metre mark. Narani, shortcut, and then Spring Hill Lad, but away he goes the Kiwi. Viander Cross races clear, three lengths in front of Spring Hill Lad. Native Neptune from a long way back, but it's easy work for Viander Cross. And the New Zealanders back in style. Viander Cross by three lengths. Trained by John Wheeler, Viander Cross the red hot favourite at 11 to 4 on. Tra Taken by Stephen King. For the first time in his career, Scalacci was seen in the uncustomary role of pacemaker. It's Scalacci first into the straight, slipped a couple in front of jolly old Mac Torquil, then came Razor Rhythm, Mannerism out wide, Scalacci at the 200, led by three lengths, jolly old Mac, excited Angel, Hilda Strike, Mannerism out wide, but Scalacci in front, 100 out, he's got a big lead over, excited Angel, Mannerism, and it's Scalacci who'll win the futurity. Scalacci all the way, a length and a quarter, excited Angel up the 200, led by three lengths, jolly old Mac, excited Angel, Hilda Strike, Mannerism out wide, but Scalacci in front, 100 out, he's got a big lead over, Excited Angel Mannerism and it's Scalacci who'll win the futurity. Scalacci all the way, a length and a quarter. Excited Angel, a big run second. Hilda Strike got up. Scalacci's win in the futurity was his sixth at Group 1 level, and there was more to come. Trainer John Sadler produced a magnificent Blue Diamond winner with his first starter in Victoria's premier two year old event. Lady Jackie O turned in one of the best recent performances in the race to win and proves she's right up to the best in the land. First today was taken Blue Diamond Stakes. Punters got it down to Lady Jackie O, favourite at 5 to 2. Keltrice at 7 to 2. Things got rough at the turn and Lady Prospect a fair way back. Bernard Argieto followed by a lack within Jet Ball. Lady Jackie O back about fourth last. Law Barley Magic of Money, the heavyweight land speed record. Justice prevails as they turn for home. Caltree straight up on the inside. The cold in front when they turn now at the 300 metre mark and away he went. It's Caltree's a length and a half in front of Miss Prospect down the outside and Lady Jackie O getting into the clear. Caltree's in front, 150 to go. Lady Jackie O is starting to wear it down from Miss Prospect and Mun on the outside then Magic of Money. Lady of Jackie 
Jackio grabbed Caltrice 50 metres to go. A great performance in the Blue Diamond. Lady Jackio. Three quarters Caltrice just as prevails. Flashed home out wide to run. For the turn, and Lady Jackio showed great fight. And Keltrice first into the straight from Ken Vane. Lady Jackio's got knocked down trying to get a run. She's bursting through an opening now. Keltrice at the 200. Two in front. Lady Jackio after her from Miss Prospect. Keltrice in front. Lady Jackio a length astern trying very hard. She's lifting. It's a mighty run. Lady Jackio charges to the front and she's won it from Keltrice. Courage won the day for this filly. During the Hawthorne colours, Lady Jackio started favourite. For Greg Hall, he's sick. But we've had a loss yet either. OK, let's look. The Australian Cup has produced some memorable performances. Bone crushing up like that. Bruce Viander crosses even money favourably was last night in Star of the Realm at 3-1. to one. But we've had a lot of rain at Fleming. Your feelings on Viander Cross? You had a good look at him last Sunday? I think he'll win very easily, Bruce. I think he's an outstanding horse. And uh, this will set the scene for the inevitable clash of heat and naturalism. And that will be the, the race of the decade, for sure. Max, you would have seen it on closed circuit. I'm a Viander Cross man in everything until he comes up against naturalism. You're preferring naturalism at this stage? At this stage, but we've still got a few weeks to go. Bruce, can I take... Ah, uh, gee, you'd almost love to get it, wouldn't you? Three to one star of the realm, nine mannerism and Greg Hall's... What? Tomorrow. Oh, Vienna... Vienna Cross or star of the realm? Vienna Cross is certainly. He'll win, particularly with the rain. Can you switch? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to switch. <laughs> And Durbridge into the straight, the leader from Fra, Prince Salieri. Viander Cross on the outside, clear of mannerism. Uh, Star of the Realms under the whip, last of all, 400 to go. Durbridge in front of Fra, two lengths back now. Viander Cross, Dittman's asking him to go. He's starting to wind up now. They've got to the 200. Durbridge grabbed by Fra, now Viander Cross coming. Prince Salieri just behind them. Fra's in front. Dittman goes for Viander Cross with the whip. He answers magnificently. The champion strides away, Viander Cross. Viander Cross for the Australian Cup, a length and a half. Either Fra or Star of the Realm, who only got warm in the last 200 flights. Star of the Realm's under the whip, last of all, 400 to go. Durbridge in front of Fra. Two lengths back now, Viander Cross. Dittman's asking him to go. He's starting to wind up now. They've got to the 200. Durbridge grabbed by Fra. Now Viander Cross coming. Prince Salieri just behind them. Fra's in front. Dittman goes for Viander Cross with the whip. He answers magnificently. The champion strides away, Viander Cross. Viander Cross for the Australian Cup, a length and a half. Either Fra or Star of the Realm, who only got warm in the last 200 flying. Uh, either Fra or Star of the Realm, who only got warm in the last 200 flying. The Andercross bought in a package for just $940, took his stakes past $2 million with ease. Now to Sydney for the Ranvet and BMW, where he's likely to clash with Australasia's other current champion, Naturalism. We've been aiming at Sydney all along, really. This is um, a nice lead-up race for them. And, uh, hope between Australasia's two best horses. I'd hate to get off this horse and uh, not be able to get back on him. And, uh, you know, that, that'd be a crying shame. Beander Cross always in the red, started 11 to 4 on favourite. Star of the Realm 6 to 1. But BMW, the Ranbit. BMW, the Ranbit. And who, BMW, the Ranbit. And who will Dipman ride? You'll ride naturalism. Definitely. Yep. Thank when, you. when did you get that commitment? Oh, can't tell secrets, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had to twist his arm? No, not at all. I mean, uh, he's had a great... Weeks to go before the Golden Slippers... Running an odds-on favourite, the Phantom Chance was chasing his ninth consecutive win in the Group 1 New Zealand Stakes. Also on the line was a trip to Sydney for the AJC Derby. Going nicely, two lengths now on Kiss. On the inside to Lurk, just been urged along. They're followed Whitford Hill. Over on the outside, then to Young Pirate. Here's the Phantom Chance track coming into it. Followed Ocean Liner, Regal Span. Into the straight, though, 400 left to go, and it's solved it. By a length and a half to Kiss, followed then by Young Pirate, and behind him, Whitford Hill. Now here's the big chestnut winding up down the outside, but solve it. Meantime, two lengths on Kiss, followed by Whitford Hill. The Phantom Chance and Young Pirate, but Frolbert's got their measure. Whitford Hill switching through on the inside, coming home pretty well. Well, but Solvit, Solvit is cleared right out in the New Zealand Stakes and Solvit, a nice win for David Walsh, second home, Whitford Hill, third kiss. Jockey David Walsh made it two Group 1 wins for the day when Solvit led all the... ...ago before the Golden Slipper Stakes, most of the serious contenders for the $2 million race have been sorted out. Placed third in the Blue Diamond, the John Hawks-trained Justice Prevails was certainly among them following this win. 
turn. Social Path, the leader, straightening up. He got away from Headstrong. Keltrice is coming after him quickly, and they're clear of Justice Prevails, who's going to come home well at the 200. Social Path tackled by Keltrice, who went past him. Justice Prevails on the outside is a big danger, though. Justice Prevails is coming at Keltrice, and they've come right away from the others. Justice Prevails was never travelling in the race. That's the first time he's been on the bit going over the line, and he won easily from Keltrice and Sparkling. With a win in, sparkling. with a win in race record time, Justice Prevails booked himself a place in the Golden Slipper field. By Gemma, the West Silver Scarlet. The long-awaited return clash between Naturalism and Viandacross took place in the Ranvit Stakes. Go past the 800 mark, Dr. Grace in front and led by a length on Mahia who's keeping in touch. Naturalism is now in a pocket on the inside of Viandacross as they come to the 600 mark. Further back is Rough Habit followed by Nate of Neptune and then Telesto and Sub-Zero last as they near the corner. Dr. Grace with the inside running just led Mahia. Naturalism is being pushed along by Dittman Viandacross on his outside and they're well clear of native Neptune and rough habit as they turn the corner. Mahia immediately headed Dr. Grace. Viander Cross is now winding up. There's room between them for naturalism. It's taking him a while to get going. The filly Mahia still in front. Viander Cross on the outside coming at a naturalism on the fence and rough habit is getting home well. Viander Cross goes for home. Viander Cross is drawing away from Mahia and naturalism. Well done, Jimmy Walker. Viander Cross beat naturalism and the score is now two all in between them for naturalism. It's taking him a while to get going. The filly Mahia still in front, Viander Cross on the outside coming at a naturalism on the fence and Rough Habit is getting home well, Viander Cross goes for home, Viander Cross is drawing away from Mahia and naturalism, well done Jimmy Walker Viander Cross beat naturalism and the score is now two all between the champions, Mahia third goes on to the BMW, I mean Tokyo's a long time ago but you just wonder whether naturalism's been slightly disadvantaged in this campaign because of Tokyo and having to go on a little longer than Viander Cross. George watching from Flemington yesterday, your thoughts on Viander Cross and naturalism? Firstly I thought uh, Viander Cross was superb Bruce, it was an excellent performance and very well ridden, we'll talk about that later. Betting ring before the race was that naturalism was jaded we wouldn't see the best of naturalism I don't think we did see the best of naturalism uh, yet I don't know at this stage whether the best of naturalism is better than Viander Cross. Viander Cross is an outstanding horse. I'm not going to wipe naturalism after one defeat. It's two all, but nevertheless, I've now got that nagging doubt. The Philly win the Golden Slipper. Let's have a look at Bint Masquet winning her uh, race yesterday, the Magic Night. She looked pretty impressive. Bint Masquet is the leader and straightened up about three quarters on fitting with Peggy Ann off the track. Right behind those Trista Love who's flat to the boards turning for home and then Miss Prospect and Leaping Gull followed by Janelle again in the straight 300 out and Bint Masquet booted away. Bint Masquet put about two and a half lengths on fitting and Trista Love who's getting going again followed by Miss Prospect and Peggy Ann but it's all Bint Masquet 100 out. Uh, this is the real Bint Masquet today. She's streaking away and is going to record a ridiculously easy win. One by four Four lengths or a bit by Janelle again in the straight 300 out and Bint Masquet booted away. Bint Masquet put about two and a half lengths on fitting and Trista Love who's getting going again followed by Miss Prospect and Peggy Ann but it's all Bint Masquet 100 out. Uh, this is the real Bint Masquet today. She's streaking away and is going to record a ridiculously easy win. One by four lengths or a bit less pulling up over Trista Love. Miss Prospect has run third. Uh, but on Bint Masquet that is the best performance as far as raw talent is concerned we've seen leading up to the slipper but she's got to be have more than raw talent to win the slipper that got the golden slipper for market bit mask is a hot favorite the draw and the conditions if it's wet at all let you and they're all set another Friedman star took center stage with regular rider Damien Oliver back in the saddle Scalacci led all the way in the George Ryder stakes 700 out, Scalacci led over Spearman. Welcome Knight going up to make a line of three. Two lengths away, Kinjate now being ridden along, followed by Durbridge, Soho Square. Primacy in on the fence, and then Big Dreams, Deposition, Calm Bomb, Excited Angel, and Planet Ruler last, but taking off as they turn the corner. Into the straight, Scalacci, the leader. Spearman on the outside is keeping him busy. Primacy has run up on the fence behind those leaders. Dittman's trying to get between them now. There's a split coming, followed by Welcome Knight and Durbridge at the 200. Scalacci clear, Primacy's after him now. Now. Primacy out of the pocket is coming after the grey flash. Scalacci still in front. Primacy can't get to him. Scalacci holding on and he's run the 1500 all right. Scalacci wins the rider. Soho Square flew. Might have got second. A nose in front of Primacy. Then deposition and... The George Rider was Scalacci's last win in season 92-93. The four-year-old had nine starts with six wins, including three Group 1 victories. 
and lifted his career earnings to $1.87 million. The draw and the conditions, if it's wet at all, let you... And they're all set. Stalls open, they're away in the Golden Slipper. There's a great start. And mid bit Masque on the extreme outside is about the first out. Jet Ball and Moss Rocket began brilliantly with Rose's Image and Gem of the West. Rock Review is away quickly. The rider trying to get in closer, followed by Sportsworks. It just prevails as absolute last. To the turn, 500 to go. Moss Rocket is taken to the lead. Bint Masque second, Rose's Image third, followed by Keltrees. Jet Ball can't get on the track. And then Sportsworks and Gem of the West and well back Star of Nouvelle, followed by Rock Review and Capablanca. Danger's in front of about three and Justice prevails as last. Moss Rocket is in front of the 300. Bint Masque, the first to go after him. They're a mile in front of Kel Treese and Rose's image, followed by Jet Ball. But it's Bint Masque. Mighty Mick drives the filly to the lead. Bint Masque, and she is streeting them. Look at her go. Bint Masque coming away to record a brilliant slipper win. Justice prevails down the outside, has come from last to get second. Mile in front of Kel Treese and Rose's image, followed by Jet Ball. But it's Bint Masque. Mighty Mick. Drives the filly to the lead, Bint Masque, and she is streeting them. Look at her go. Bint Masque coming away to record a brilliant slipper win. Justice prevails down the outside, has come from last to get second. Yes, a great win, a mighty second by Justice Prevails after the race. It's a high. I think the interesting thing, Keith, that's come out of this is that uh, we were saying it was an ordinary year for two year olds, and suddenly we've got two very good ones in Bint Masque and Justice Prevails. Yes. They could be outstanding. Well, I think so, Bruce. Uh, we won't see in a return bout against Justice Prevails, but I do think that Justice Prevails put up a, a, an outstanding performance. It would be a very good contest. And as I said, base record is she something very special? Yeah, I think she's. I think she'll be, you know, an out, absolutely outstanding filly. I mean, she, she is already, but I mean, at three, you know, with a pedigree, she should train on and make a Guinea's Oaks filly. Yeah. Will she race again this autumn? No, she's going straight to paddock. Lee Cox Plate, Caulfield Cup, Melbourne Cup. Now the Golden Slipper. What's left? a steeplechase in the middle of the year. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't you love him? What a, what a personality that man is. He's also a good... ...one of events, one of which was the Queen Elizabeth Stakes. The race had only four starters, two of which were trained by John Wheeler. Cassidy on rough habit is watching Viander Cross as they come around the turn. He's going to hold that horse in behind the leader, but the cutaway's coming up now. By gee, the leader got away here, Durbridge. He's got two and a half lengths on Viander Cross and rough habit. They're both battling to pick him up at the moment. Durbridge is still in front, coming to the 200. Inch by inch, Viander Cross and rough habit are getting to him, but Durbridge is clear with 100 to go. Viander Cross is the one to come after him. Durbridge shifted a bit. Viander Cross has nailed him now. Viander Cross grabs the lead in the shadows of the post. Go, Vandy. Viander Cross Cross draws away to beat Durbridge. Rough habit third. Now, by gee, the leader got away here, Durbridge. He's got two and a half lengths on Viander Cross and Rough Habit. They're both battling to pick him up at the moment. Durbridge is still in front, coming to the 200. Inch by inch, Viander Cross and Rough Habit are getting to him, but Durbridge is clear with 100 to go. Viander Cross is the one to come after him. Durbridge shifted a bit. Viander Cross has nailed him now. Viander Cross grabs the lead in the shadows of the post. Go, Vandy. Viander Cross draws away to beat Durbridge. Rough Habit third. He didn't... The Queen Elizabeth Stakes was the last run of the season for Kiwi star Viander Cross. With five Group 1 victories in 92-93, the four-year-old boosted his career earnings to $2.58 million. All age stakes, Mick Dittman was going for a hat-trick of Group 1 wins on naturalism. The odds on favourite. They're packed up very tightly on the corner. Kinjate led. In fact, he got away from Aquidity as they straighten up. Big Dreams on the outside. Then Mighty Tango followed by My Eagle Eye, Prince Salieri and his Dittman taking naturalism to the extreme outside. And he's starting to sprint as they top the rise and going with him as Rough Habit. Kinjate still in front at the 200 mark and is going strongly. Clear of My Eagle Eye, naturalism and Rough Habit coming right down the outside. Kinjate still in front. Now Rough Habit's got him. Rough Habit on the extreme outside has reached the lead from naturalism and My Eagle Eye and Rough Habit wins the All Age. Rough Habit beat Naturalism. Third's hard to line up. Jate still in front. Now Rough Habit's got him. Rough Habit on the extreme outside has reached the lead from Naturalism and My Eagle Eye. And Rough Habit wins the All Age. Rough Habit beat Naturalism. Third's hard to line up. Thanks. The mighty Rough Habit chalked up his ninth Group One victory and took his day. Two great horses there. Ron, uh, Rough Habit's off to Brisbane. He's going to try and do what he has done for the past two years, win the Doombin Cup and the Stradbroke, win the double. It's going to be tougher this year because the races are in reverse. The Doombin Cup, 2,020 metres. Then two weeks later, back to 1,400 metres in the Strad. Now, we, we'll have to wait and see tomorrow whether the three-year-olds, such as our Pompey, the Derby winner, check that style, etc., are as good as subs. Ron said he's a sprinting stay and he was just absolutely outstanding.
they're bunching up now. Double Gin still the lamplighter, shows the way a length in front. Our Pompey has raced to him very quickly. Delmar is next, and they were followed then by on the inside immersion. Big Baron is starting to pack guns out deep, and then came Head Cutter, followed further back by Toy Image, and still his arm trying to get clear. Our Pompey and Double Gin turn for home clear. Head Cutter and Big Baron behind them, giving ground immersion. Delmar still there, and they were followed further out on the track by Ram Yar and his arm. Our Pompey, the leader, Head Cutter and Big Baron running on. Our Pompey inside the 200. I reckon with 200 to go, the three year old Our Pompey is going to complete the derby and the Adelaide Cup double. He'll win, and he'll win very, very easily indeed. Here's a stayer of the future. Our Pompey and the Rack of Olas colours by five. Second, well, it's an all three year old finish. I think check that style and on the outside, Head Cutter for the minus. Three-year-olds have got a terrific record in the race. Well, our Pompey's win was sensational. Uh, he took off a long way from home, and if ever they were going to test him at two miles, it was the perfect way to do it, and he came through with shining colours. I spoke to uh, Mr Rakavolis um, a little while later after on the phone a couple of days afterwards, and uh, surprisingly, they're, they're probably aiming more for the Cox Plate with him rather than the um, Caulfield Melbourne Cups. So that. Well, it's a great job being a race caller, particularly when outstanding horses win against the odds and achieve history. And it happened yesterday at uh, Doombin, when Rough Havoc won the Doombin Cup for the third time. No, no, for Wayne. 100 left to go and Corndale first for home for play or pay. Kiwi Golf or Pallet on the outside. Slight chance has gone back into the field and Rough Habit has pulled to the outside and given full bore in the straight and Kiwi Golfer and Pallet went up to take the lead together. Rough Habit coming on the outside. Kiwi Golf or Pallet. Rough Habit is chiming in. Listen to the crowd roar. Rough Habit takes the lead. Jimmy Cassidy, Rough Habit. Three Durban Cups in succession. What a horse. Rough Habit has got up the win from Kiwi Golfer. Third Pallet. The up on the outside, Kiwi Golf for the middle. Here comes Rough Habit on the outside. Jockey Jim is starting to go for him now. He's bringing him with a great run. He might do it, Rough Habit. He's hit the lead from Kiwi Golfer by Crikey. He's going to do it. That's three Doombin Cups. Well done, champ. Rough Habit first. In winning his third successive Doombin Cup, the remarkable Rough Habit recorded the 10th Group 1 victory of his career. From five starts, the six-year-old has won 24 races for prize money totaling $3.26 million. Oh, bless his little heart, rough habit. John Wheeler was absolutely delighted after the race. Have you seen a reception like that for a horse? No, I haven't. I've never experienced anything like that. It's fantastic, yeah. They love him here, don't they? Oh, yeah, and so they should, you know. He's a great horse. He's no, no oil painting, but he's fantastic, isn't he? What now? Through with flying colours for us. One of the great moments in, in Queensland's racing history yesterday at Doombin, and he's still, a, he's still an all-out champion. Well, you won't get many arguments there, Wayne. Let's... So, but still a major story there with uh, four of the top riders in Australia all being outed. Let's go to the Oaks. Di has a beautiful run all the way. Slanchivar, the disappointment, sitting outside the leader and slight chance parked in the box seat. Down the side, 900 out from the judge, and the leader is Philomena Link Slanchiva. Slight chance, third, the rails. Die might need a touch of luck shortly. Rambuxus, Slanchiva, second, Rambuxus, third. Slight chance, going to go for the run on the rails. Is there enough room? Die get through on the rails on slight chance, and she's coasting 300 out. Slight chance went to the lead from Filament Slanchiva, Daisy Do, and a hug and royal tiara from Lady Cloud. But slight chance raced away with 100 metres left to go. Yeah, she's home, slight chance. She's well clear. Royal Tiara's making up a lot of ground late, but this has been another great ride to Shane Dye. Slight chant wins the Oaks. Second Royal for the run on the rails. Is there enough room? Dye gets through on the rails on Slight Chance, and she's coasting 300 out. Slight Chance went to the lead from Filament Slanchy Far Daisy Do, and a hug and Royal Tiara from Lady Cloud. But Slight Chance raced away with 100 metres left to go. Yeah, she's home, Slight Chance. She's well clear. Royal Tiara's making up a lot of ground late, but this has been another a great ride to Shane Dye. Slight chant wins the Oaks. Second Royal Tiara tight for third. And horses that do well in Brisbane one year keep going back and doing well again the next year. Shane Dye wasn't... Yeah, she's just a class above them. There's no doubt about that. It's just a shame she couldn't win the three Oaks. She was a very unlucky second in Sydney, but there's no doubt she's the best three-year-old filly in Australia. From Keith, some great racing in Queensland. Uh, Wayne would... Uh... Keith, to get an argument with you there, she's now won six Group 1 races. Yes, no, sure, you get no argument from me, Bruce. Uh... Having prepared the winners of Australia's four most prestigious races this season, the Friedman brothers blazed a Group 1 trail that is unlikely to be repeated again. Their amazing run continued in the Sires Produce Stakes at Eagle Farm.
It's Santiago Bell slipping away from them at the 300. Leads by a length on Mahogany. Here he comes, Mahogany. Pimpala Sun has pulled to the outside and he's running on gamely. Mahogany's hit the front now from Santiago Bell and he's shot away. Looks as though he's got it one. Pimpala Sun trying hard on the outside, but it's all Mahogany. Mahogany's far too good in the run to the post. He scores well. Pimpala Sun second. Santiago Bell third. And look at... 1,400 metres. Rough Habit wore blinkers for the first time in his quest to win the Stradbroke Handicap for the third successive year. Rough Habit ran a great race. However, it was a rising star from the Bart Cummings stable who blitzed the opposition. Good start except for Rough Habit who missed the kick and he dropped to the tail of the field and victory. 800 out, victory day is the Kiwi golfer Ken Fair. Deposition looking for the way out. Never under charges, gone up about eighth on the home turn just behind those. Pharaoh's a long way back and Rough Habit's looking for ground with Blondin, then excited Angel. Chortle led 400 out from Victory Day as followed by Insinuid. Over pitch coming on the outside, Dan Jika running home, Faro can't get out. Here comes Never Under Charge, he's given full bore on the outside, 250 out, Chortle the leader, Never Under Charge. Stephen King gathered in the reins, the three-year-old burst of the lead with 100 metres left to go. Are we looking at the next sprinting champion of Australia? Sure we are. Never under charge. Shades of divide and rule one by four lengths to either Dan Jeeke. Pharaoh's in a photo with deposition rough habit. Coming on the outside, Dan Jeeke running home. Pharaoh can't get out. Here comes Never under charge. He's given full bore on the outside. 250 out. Short of the leader. Never under charge. Stephen King gathered in the reins. The three-year-old burst of the lead with 100 metres left to go. Are we looking at the next sprinting champion of Australia? Sure we are. Never under charge. Shades of divide and rule one by four lengths to either Dan Jeeke. Pharaoh's in a photo with deposition rough habit. Chortle's hit the front now. 300 metres to go. Chortle got a length on Ensign Ewan and Bucks Pride. Coming to the outside over pitch and here comes Never Under Charge. He's unwinding with a great run on the outside. He swooped on those leaders and Never Under Charge has raced to the front now from Bucks Pride and Chortle. Look at him go the last little bit. Oh, he's a beauty all right. Never Under Charge is racing away and he scores in the strand break and he's won it by four lengths. How good is he? Having his first king can judge a good horse. The way, you know, when you come and beat horses like that today, by four lengths. It's got, you've got to be an exceptional sort of horse to do that. Well, we reckon we might have seen a new champion yesterday, never under charge, winning the Stradbroke handicap. Talking about Cox Plates, maybe taking on the whole world, Keith Hillier. What's your feeling about never under charge? Oh, I think he's a very exciting horse. Bruce, only 10 or 11 starts. He's won seven. His stakes have gone past half a million. But it's far too premature to be talking about the Cox Plate. I mean, no Stradbroke handicap winner, to my records, has won a Cox Plate. In the same season, Kingston. This race for the greatest horses in Australia. Yes, I do. Keith, I'll argue with you. I think Never Under Charge is the ideal horse for a race like the Cox Plate. He's a bit raw at the moment, but a raw horse winning a Stradbroke handicap as he did yesterday. Two tenths of a second outside of the record, and he went to the line with his head on his chest, four lengths in advance of the opposition. He's the ideal type of horse for a Cox Plate. He's got a great turn of foot, tremendous acceleration. Look out that he doesn't win the Cox Plate this coming spring. He's a very good horse. And imagine the... itself, then keep an eye on Mahogany, a tough and genuine horse who gave the Freedman Stable Group 1 success number 12 for the season. They've got 300 metres to go. Way Kicker Moo Cow's the one. He's moving up on the outside. He's coming out to Mahogany. Mahogany's just in front of Way Kicker Moo Cow. It's Mahogany and Way Kicker Moo Cow. They're fighting it out. Gem of the West can't win. Mahogany the inside. Way Kicker Moo Cow. Stride for stride. Nose for nose. They split it all close. Very close. Mahogany or Way Kicker Moo Cow. Up to Mahogany. Mahogany's just in front of Way Kicker Moo Cow. It's Mahogany and Way Kicker Moo Cow. They're fighting it out. Gem of the West can't win. Mahogany the inside. Way Kicker Moo Cow. Stride for stride. Nose for nose, they split it all close, very close. Mahogany or white kicker moo cap, maybe mahogany, but there's starting from a wide barrier. Mahogany defied all challenges to lead all the way in the Castle Main Stakes. Owned by prominent racing identity Lloyd Williams, Mahogany is the second Group One winner of the season for Last Tycoon. Comparisons, I think Mahogany at this stage would beat Never Under Charge in the Cox Plate. Do you? All right.